feels like COVID. Yeah, I was feeling the parallels for sure. Like isolated in this kind of, you know, pressure cooker of a situation. And I think it actually matches. So I think it was a, it was a good, it was a good choice. Um, it was a great choice. I was really happy to see, like, I wanted to be on that vacation. Would you go on that vacation? Even if you knew Kelly was going to terrorize you. Would I go? Yeah. If you knew that the whole time you were going to get terrorized by Kelly Ben Simone and you might have to do a photo shoot, would you go? Yeah. Same. Absolutely. Because the house was big enough. You could like hide from her at some point. Yeah, and everyone's like on your side. It's not like people are like she's making a lot of sense. Ooh, are you are you drinking out of a frozen margarita? (laughs) You're really. I I reached a scary island of my own today, where I was have it channeling full Katie Maloney energy, and I looked in the mirror at one point, and I was like, "You are Maloney." And then I was like, just because I was feeling really negative, and my hair was like crimped, and I was just like. I have to be quite honest with you. Like I was not in the mood. I reached a non mood to do this earlier right. today. And then I was like, well, but you have to do it. So like, what are you going to do to get yourself out of scary mode? Right. So I did reach down deep inside. You had to, to come to shoulder. Yeah. I had to, um, I had to crimp. I had to do a little tie dye action. I had to do some makeup. I had to order a Marg frozen. I love it. I love that you're you're drinking out of a very eco-friendly straw. Hey, I'm nothing if not sustainable. Right? We are the virus. Mm -hmm. Earth is taking back. Earth is reclaiming itself. We are the virus. Honestly, the Earth cockroaches are reclaiming the Earth. I think it's true. They are. Uh, I see them every night when I go for a walk with Tony. They scuttle around. I haven't seen the cockroaches. I've seen I've seen, I've seen less too many for comfort. I've seen less crows recently, which is upsetting for me. Yeah, I, I think because there's less trash around the street. Yeah. Uh, a few. I saw a bat, like a spring bat, at one point in the in the dust sky, and that was kind of cool. Oh, so like a are, flying bat. Yeah, like a little like fruit bat. That was cool. I love bats. They are they cool. Really had a bat. At, They've had a tough go of it. Bats are, you know, I went to my Simon is from Austin and we went to Austin last year and we went to that bridge, that famous bridge where all the bats hang upside down under it. And in like the mm-hmm. spring, they like fly and they blot out the sky. I wonder if people are going to still go there, if they're going to be like, is that like testing your luck to go just like sit under bats and maybe get pooped on by a bat? I mean, it smelled, it didn't smell good, but it was, it was really, I mean, they weren't that active that night. There was, it was still pretty crazy, but it was the whole, like hundreds of people were gathered on the bridge and it was, I've never seen anything like it. I would go still. They were hanging. They're hanging. They're hanging. It's a little, no, well, they're hanging. And then at a certain, right at like post sunset, like right at that second, they're like molecular, like instincts just tell them to go. So they, it's like, right at a certain hour wow. or a minute and then they just all fly and they sort of fly in like the thousands that's are cool and it smelled really bad though yeah they're shitting guano everywhere <laughs> i was like i've seen ace ventura too i know what guano is mm-hmm. so today was you had a katie maloney day other than that or was it just like it was just day? like look buca de beppo claims everything eventually Buca de Bebo. So Lara um, and I are, are planning on going to the Encino Buca and sitting in Dorit's citrus themed room. I mean, it is. I wild. am Buca de Beppo. I am like Entourage. I am Queens Boulevard. I am Buca de Beppo. I mean, all that. I'm not trying to be mean, but that looks like it was put together in like a day. Oh, I liked it. You do? I think it's my I think it's the my Oklahoma roots where I was like, that looks nice. Like it I was like No, listen, I'm from, into it. I'm from like I'm from suburban New Jersey. I'm all about like Ruby Tuesdays and chili. Fake and lemon 
is a real vibe. I mean, it is. Yolanda would love it. Yolanda would love it. I fear for how dusty those fake lemons are going to get because you know that they just like they collect dust and you can't clean them. So Mm -hmm. I feel like it's going to be looking dusty and crusty in no time. I just want to go and go. Oh, Capri. The Amalfi Amalfi Coast. (laughs) Were you pointing at that mural? Look, it's Capri. Look, Capri. (laughs) Look, it's Capri. (laughs) That's what Dorit says. And you see, it's. It is Capri. Is there going to be like a final show? Like, are they going to have something in the season? A big reveal? Yeah, is there going to be like a, an event of her Buka reveal, or do you think that was? There has to be. They're keying up too much Buka content to yeah. not give us like a grand reveal or a party at Buka where everyone gathers. Yeah, um, it has to happen. We need it. We've earned it. We have. I'm. You know, it's just we're we're blessed right now to have two nights in a row of Beverly Hills and New New York. So it's it's just like. Oh, and it's you There's know two nights in a row, Beverly Hills. Well, no, it's it's like in one after the other. Like Beverly Hills is tomorrow. Roni oh yeah, yeah, Tuesday. yeah. So it's just mm-hmm. that feels blessed. Yeah. And what better I mean, for your birthday? I'm in heaven. Mm-hmm. Lara's birthday. I'm in heaven between. Everyone. Yeah, my birthday's on Saturday. Woo! I'm feeling existential about it. Yeah. But what are you gonna do? You're turning. 20... 25. 25. No, 36, which is crazy because I was joking. My The psychic, the COVID psychic that I consulted with told me that once I turned 36, I was going to get into younger guys. And I was telling a girlfriend of mine about that. And we were joking and she's like, like how young? And I was like, I mean, 18, as long as they're legal, bring them on. And then I... <laughs> heard what I was I in the moment I was like lol that's hilarious Lars like you did it again slam dunk and then I got home and I was like wait an 18 year old is literally 18 years younger than I'm going to be I didn't realize that in the moment I thought like they were 10 years younger and it was just like silly (laughs) half my age is 18 that's shocking I'm not I wasn't ready for that no I mean we're both in our 30s I was shocked to learn tonight that Alex McCord is 36 in Scary Island. She I, is my about to be my age. I don't relate. I don't relate. I no, I, go. I had That's actually <laughs> it for me. How long will it take for Buka to claim me? <laughs> Bye. <laughs> She's not. No, I'm like waiter. <laughs> Should I have not disclose that? That was a discovery. No, I'm fine. I, I don't I, like hide my age. No, I'm just like no, it's also not out. even that. It's not like it's like 36 is just like mid 30s. It's not 36 like 36 is the new 18. Honestly, <laughs> but, but, but I was shocked. I thought Alec because she she seems so much older, and I I thought <laughs> I, <laughs> I thought she was episode, like in her 40s. I did too, but I I realized I I actually went back and listened to it three times just to make sure that's what she was saying. So you can't really hear it. It's very it's quick but she says when kelly's like this is a it's like preschool we all put our thoughts down on this paper and then we crumple them up like complaints it's like being in preschool and then alex says i don't want to be in preschool i like being 36 <laughs> and i was like 36 i thought she was like at least i thought she was like 45 yeah like i would have been like yeah 44 years sensible 44 that just seems like at that age you've achieved whatever it is that she's achieved on Roni. Like she seems very mature. And I'm not saying like, oh, she's an old hag. I'm just No, saying, like, she just has she has mature like, wise energy. Yeah. She's like mature not that you're not. wears her hair in like a bouffant, like that side that side part with a poof. I was like, that reads like someone who's seen it all and has entered their forties and is not gonna be looking back. She's a she's a Midwest girl. Yeah. Some Our camp. lives are just so different. It's weird to get into the age territory, like, of these women. And then also it's, Keep like, coming. women on Sex in the City. Like, yeah, I'm, like, now in the Sex in the City years. Right. And I just, like, didn't sign up for any of this, honestly, at the end of the well, day. We're all going through it together. We're passing through time together. 
Yeah. Sorry. Should I not have? That's true. I didn't mean to bring this up. (laughs) I'm like, it would be cool if on my birthday, melancholia happened. Like, I would not complain about that. I would think that that was awesome. Oh, someone just wrote at least Carrie didn't bring up 9-11. Well, now you did. So it worked. (laughs) (laughs) It's going to 9-11 count. And it always ends up at 9-11. You know whether what? you like it, whether you like it or not, honestly. Sorry. That's just how it goes. It, is. it um, is what it is. No, I'm it's I also speaking of Alex, I realized years ago my my roommate in New York, Susie and I, we got I think we were like really high one night and we we both friended Alex McCord and Simon Van Kempen, her husband, on Facebook. Like their personal back when they had like personal. Oh yeah, that was and, the best when you could just like find low key like find people. Yeah, and so I or reality stars on Facebook. So I'm like friends. I didn't real like I've been friends with them since like 2012, and I every so often Alex comes up on my newsfeed, and I re remember that I'm friends with them. What's going on in her world? Can you read us maybe a few Facebook yeah. posts of hers? Well, they've relocated to Australia. So they're, they're like... Ex, Down on death. She's an expatriate. Because Simon's from there. Yeah, that's chic. They belong there, honestly. Yeah, they were not meant for... I like no. Alex. Guess what? In rewatching, Alex is kind of like a Miranda of the show. Like, I like what she's bringing to the table. She keeps it real. Oh. And she has really good beach hair. See, that hair does not, like, when I'm 40, in my 40s, my sensible 40s, I will go really voluminous and right. like a, side, a side part poof. But yeah. at this juncture, she it's really she like recently, wavy. Yeah. She got her master's degree in psychology. That makes sense. New I would New trust New her New as England. a therapist. Vice Chancellor Scholar 2020, Sarah Alexandra McCord. Do you think she's adopted an Australian accent yet? Probably. Yeah. That's what I would do that. Like, if Remember I had to I live around, even when I go back to Oklahoma, if I'm around people that I know from OKC for too long, I start talking Oklahoman. I love it. Yeah, I- it's just what you do. I mean, Meg- remember when Meghan Markle like started rocking a slight British accent? Mm-hmm. That was great. Let's hear it for Megan. It's respectful, quite frankly. <laughs> Z-Way wrote, shout out to Laura. for Megan. Karen. What? <laughs> Z-Way wrote, shout out to Laura and Carrie. <laughs> Her forthcoming guests. Um, but yeah, Alex is doing great. And Wait, what is Alex saying on Facebook? Please. Alex Please. Ford. Yeah, what is she saying? What's her update? Okay, so she graduated from, she got her master's degree. That was her most recent post. She said, mm-hmm. call me master, not mistress. Oh. <laughs> Amen. I can call her master. I'll call her whatever she wants me to call her. Um, she posted a Joe Gunn meme. <gasps> or someone Joe posted G- a Joe Gunn meme and wow. she liked it. She loved it. Um, Joe Gunn is blowing up. Honestly, yeah, he's he, great. That kid is that kid. I yeah, don't know why. He's like our age. Send me back to Buka. Back to Buka, I go for that. A table alone at Buka. That was table very for funny. one. I'm I'm such a fan of his. Table for one. Laura. Waiter. <laughs> Waiter? <laughs> Legs. Table for one. <laughs> Lower half. Okay, so this is Alex's. She's doing well. She looks great. Yeah. Um. This hair is feeling way too long, parentheses, and frizzy, but it's been raining for a month. Time to cut. So she's she's like crowdsourcing suggestions hair. on her hair. Okay, love. I um, wish she would get really active on her like Facebook like comments and yeah. likes. Like, be like, yes, queen, cut that mane. We know she's like, on the right side of things politically. Mm-hmm. She wrote, first brush bushfires, now flooding. Stay tuned for the plague of locusts. <laughs> that was in February. So. Yeah. Um. Mm. That kid. Don't, guys. Kid. I'm closing out the chat for that. Oh, come on. Everyone... <laughs> <laughs> Don't. 
Don't saw this that. yesterday. None of us could stop giggling. This is what happens to low performing elves on shelves. This is from Christmas. Oh, uh, she's an elf on the shelf parent. An elf on the shelf kind of parent. Re- Will a I lot be of her- an elf on the shelf parent? <laughs> Maybe. Will you? I can see myself getting really into an elf on the shelf. Yeah. Oh, Simon Van Kempen graduated from law school last fall. Wow. So they're like, they went, they really went hard. They're a power school. couple. Yeah. Uh, a lot of her posts are about rain because I guess it rains a lot there. Mm-hmm. rain we've so got rain just, after months of nothing this will sure. fill the water tanks and calm the bushfires we're dancing and singing in it <laughs> she's like mad maxing and the alpha <laughs> she's walkabout <laughs> she's walkabout energy but not in a yule's way and just like her own oh. way um she's very witty i would she expect always, nothing less she was always really witty mm-hmm. um I should start wishing her happy birthdays. Don't you just think? Oh, she writes it back. What, mom? She, writes, she says, mom. yeah. She definitely speaks in like a in a accent for yeah. sure in conversation. Right. What were you gonna say? No, I just like don't you just think like when you're watching like okay, Scary Island's ten years old, right? Right, crazy, fucking don't, insane. You never think that you're ever going to be the age of these women you no. know what i mean you never I, ever think of yourself as like someday i too might go to a scary island but like yeah. or like be their age and then suddenly you are apparently suddenly I mean, your Bethany, friend tells you that you and alex mccord are the same age and then you're like are you so, oh my I'm, god i'm joking <laughs> carrie i'm kidding i'm kidding carrie's fucking Care. canceled for that everyone you heard it here Care's first canceled. Care. Hashtag carry is over party. Um, no. Oh. I am over. I should. I'm never reveal a woman's age. Um, <laughs> you are just I... Luann, like through and through. I was watching the episode before this, and when Luann's <laughs> in the studio James, with John, the producer, like James Brown. James Brown. I feel James oh. Brown. Ho. And she goes ho. <laughs> ho. What? Look at this. It's beautiful in here. I, I love it. You might, but you must know that. You come here every uh, day. I feel like Madonna. <laughs> Remember when he told her her voice was like Madonna's? Get out he of here. He said her voice was like Fergie's. And I was like, that <laughs> was true. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bye, Madonna. Anyway. <laughs> um, no. I think Bethany was like mid 33 when she started. Yeah. Young. 30, she was, I mean, I, she was like close to my age. I'm 31. She's baby. She was really, and she was but a mere baby. And now, and it's crazy to see her pregnant. Cause that was so long ago. Mm-hmm. Remember? And I love that she, I love the fact that she's pregnant in this horror movie in this episode is like makes it the stakes higher. Yeah, and can you imagine attacking a pregnant woman and bullying a pregnant woman died? whose father just passed away? Like, she just buried her father. She's confessed to everyone, like, her dark truth about her relationship with her father. Been like, I was happy when he died and, yeah. like, felt relieved. And then you bully her and call her a chef, not a cook, and, like, yell at her and tell you everyone that she's going to kill you. Yeah, tell her that she has knives for teeth and then question why the <laughs> father of her child wants to kiss her. When she said, when Kelly said that in the, when she was on the phone with Jill, I was like, that's part, like, that is, that felt fishy to me. Cause it's like, are you, do you, why are you bringing Jade? You know what I mean? Not to, like, yeah. it kind of felt like she was just being like a hater. She's fully a hater, but also like knives for teeth. Kelly's living in like a claymation twilight zone episode she's She's living living in the episode of the twilight zone movie where like everyone goes over to the little kid's house that Mm -hmm. like can control everything yeah and the family is like like, really happy yeah and they have to eat like peanut butter hamburgers and that rabbit comes out like the uncle turns into the rabbit and that's what kelly is seeing kelly's like fully on an acid trip this whole time she is. She's like Kelly's living in like a, an episode of Celebrity Deathmatch. Yeah, where it's With her like, versus Bethany. 
yeah. but there, Bethany didn't do anything to her. Mm-hmm. Bethany's also so like, I know they're P- Bethany. I mean, I'm I'm a Bethany fan for life. Yeah, same. And she's same. so you just re- you forget like how rational she is in the show, and so, like she goes, she she has her moments of like when she's really emotional, but just her reactions to dealing with Kelly throughout it i'm like how did i don't know how she did that because i would have been like i would have like jumped off the balcony and swam i think i would have handled it similarly to how bethany was because there's moments when she's almost looking at the camera like you can tell that she's looking at like crew people kind of well i think she's trying to be like are you seeing what i'm seeing like are we and she says that over and over she's like finally we're on the same channel like and no, that's I like that. how I would feel really validated once everyone was on board with like, okay, this person's a psycho and I am a psycho. truly not doing anything. And it's it's like she kind of you almost felt like Bethany felt a little gaslit for for so long because no one was really seeing what she was seeing. Cause no one was mm-hmm. at I mean, they saw it on the but no one was at the the brass monkey when Kelly said, You're here and I'm up here. Yeah, I don't and like Kelly you. Tried to turn it around. I don't think you're funny. I mean, she, Bethany saw, Bethany, remember when she was leaving the brass monkey and Bethany popped out of the dark and said, Why are you still here? You're following me. <laughs> and Bethany was like, I'm, I'm getting a cab. Was all this from Kelly just thought Bethany had planted a story about her in the media? No, she, she, like, she, she hates her ass. She just conflated no everything. Like, there's probably like a f- well. Remember, Kelly had that whole incident where she like beat up her boyfriend or yeah, something. I mean, yeah, I that sounds familiar. Remember, remember the first season Kelly was on. She had that like hot, like floppy haired model boyfriend who was younger. Yes, I think they had yeah. some like cokey mm-hmm. like domestic dispute one night, and they got the police came, mm-hmm. and it like page six went crazy for it, and I think Kelly. And then there was like stuff leading after it. And I, I feel like Kelly thought Bethany was had planted the story or like she just blamed it on her. She doesn't care about you. Yeah. I mean, remember when Kelly showed up to the Halloween party that Bethany went to like all like dressed like roller girl and she showed up like two hours late? No, actually. In the first season, she was on Kelly threw a <laughs> Kelly took that crazy photo shoot for her Halloween party where she like it was for the invitations. It was supposed to be this blowout Halloween party. It was so weird. It was like at this janky place. And Kelly or Bethany and Jill, when they were still friends, showed up together. And they were just waiting for Kelly for two hours. And then Kelly finally came with like a posse of men and like gays. Not that gays aren't men. <laughs> but like men and then with, some gays. <laughs> she came with like a bunch of like bro straight guys and then like a bunch of gays and her hot like crazy model boyfriend and then ever they the other housewives had left at that point because kelly was like didn't basically didn't come to the party anyway at, it's like, crazy. the first time i ever watched this i remember being like i don't understand what's happening like i just don't i can't wrap my mind around it and i felt like even in the reunions people were like oh like she just went crazy like blah 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 and I was like wait that is like but explain and then now with 10 years between me and the original air date I fully understand how that could happen to someone yeah (laughs) oh that's a dark another dark truth it was it's harrowing but I think we should bring out our first guest let's bring her to the stage she will be revealed Z-Way from New York City she will be revealed tonight she will come, the hilarious comedian herself. Hi, guys. Oh, my Hi. God, yes. Hey, hola. Thanks for the having May- me. This is so funny. The May Queen. The May Queen yes. herself. Me yes, so me so How's Sweden? <laughs> Sweden is fantastic. Also, I want to note that I do know exactly what you're talking about with the Halloween where Kelly arrived three hours late. Yes. Wasn't that insane? Justice. And you know, honestly, when I first watched Real Housewives, I liked Kelly Ben Simone too much. Yeah. Well, when I mean, obviously, her iconic debut when she's running down Fifth Avenue in the middle of traffic. Yeah. And her yes. car is honking behind her. She was seductive. Like, she's a model, and she was. 
I love the models to Jill Ben Simone, who was like famously, the, famously, famously married. And, yeah, and like you, he, he was always the prize on America's Next Top Model. I feel That's like I true. never even saw him on and Oh my god, I always yeah. heard about him. Yeah, he no, yeah, on, yeah, yeah. He was also on an episode of Real Housewives of New Jersey when Danielle Staub takes Christine to the photo. Oh, show. that was dark. Oh god, Ever? honey, <laughs> alarming. <laughs> That was, and she was flirting with him. He was like, he was like, I want to see you in, in, in the photo now. And Danielle was like, oh, Like who, God. me? You're like, Don't mind if I do. Yeah. Wait, there's actually like a commonality that. between Danielle Staub and Lisa Rinna. Oh, yeah. Very, yeah. Yeah, Lisa, Lisa, okay, real, just a side, because you're watching Beverly Hills, the new I season. watch ever. I watched fucking Auckland, okay? Real <laughs> ninjas stand up. I am a Housewives fanatic. I know you are. But so- what do you feel about Lisa's, like, her daughter promo? I just don't care. I'm sorry. Can we be honest? And I'm going to be honest. I don't like to be honest in public, but I, I love you guys. I trust you guys. It's just a family of 340. It. It's a safe space. Uh, yeah. I think that, I think that, um, I think that it should be, that we should, that should not be the storyline. I just think right? we need separation from that. I think we've done that. We've tread that. We've tread that. Right? With, like, Christine. Yeah, they're no Bella I don't and Gigi. I love Bella and Gigi, and you can never replace Bella and Gigi yeah. Hadid. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, so. they're, I mean, they're because they're actually like true they're super iconic. Models. They're supermodels. Yeah, but they did it first. You can't do it second. It it's first. not as impactful. But but my the second man on the moon is not talked about. I'm just saying. <laughs> Who is it? Buzz? No. <laughs> Buzz? Lance Armstrong? I don't know. Muhammad yeah, Hadid. What? To Muhammad Hadid to just like loop back on his house drama because I really followed that like hardcore last oh, year. Oh, loved it. Loved it. He now is building a house next to Harry and Meghan. I think he's like their next door oh, neighbor. Really? Harry, so yes. and Harry and Meghan are living in a, one of Tyler Perry's homes? Yes, allegedly. Yes. Okay. Allegedly living where in is, Tyler Perry's home. Is it in like the Palisades or where is this? Somewhere nice. Somewhere yeah. nice. <laughs> Somewhere um, I cannot afford it. Part of town. <laughs> I, but yeah, but the Lisa, and then we'll talk, we'll go back into our girl Kelly, but um, the Lisa. Oh, yeah, we're supposed to be talking about Roni. No, no, no. It's all, I mean, it's all related. But I, my biggest thing is I'm so sick of this narrative of celebrity children who have anxiety. Like all, like, uh, I mean, I, I think Amelia, what she went through was like very, that was like brave of her to talk about it. But like her just being like, I'm anxious. And Kendall Jenner being like, I'm angry, you know what I mean? And it's like, we're all anxious. <laughs> it's called depression and we all have it. I'm just like, it's not breaking, you know what I mean? Like, all, yeah. it's, it's like their own brand of anxiety being a child. Now, honestly, a- if, if I was craft, if I was a producer crafting my perfect celebrity child narrative, yeah. it would just be like, what is it like to always have to talk about your parents all the time? <laughs> People are asking you where your dad is. Why can't your dad hang out? Where's your, where's Chris Jenner? Where's, does she want to come to the party? Right. You know? So I think that that would be like, that's where I would want to follow. Yeah. We should, mm-hmm. we should like be plants on a reality show. I would love to produce and, like, like Real Housewives. I would right? go for that job. Yeah. Well, maybe not, um, but yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> what do you think about this season? Are you into it right now? I love. I'm like wet for Denise Richards. I think that she is a gift. <laughs> love her. Yes. Yeah, she's she's interesting. Be. She's compelling. Even if even if she's a little cuckoo Lulu, we can move past that. We can. And That's you know part what? of the charm. And she's like exactly. married to a guy who's like obsessed with frequencies. Sign and is up. hot. <laughs> They're gorgeous. <laughs> I-, I love attractive people. That's why I liked Kristen Takeman. Yes. Yeah, I liked her too. It's that model vibe. Yeah, yeah I think it's like if Again. you're a pretty girl. Yeah, I'm like, it's like for me, Housewives is watching my Barbies fight. And so it like, t- like Harper gives me back to like my elementary school days when I would like take <laughs> Teresa and Barbie and Kelly and they'd like Damn. pull each other's hair. Yeah, and, and like Beanie Babies, making my Beanie exactly. Babies. But I, <laughs> yes, I'm. I was so happy that that this that Denise finally said I'm Denise Richards this season. Because like, you can't. How do you lap her? She was a Bond oh, girl. No, and she's Denise. Like Kyle calling her ragamuffin was so offensive to me because out of rude. pocket. Out of pocket. How dare you? When she was like, oh, I've been on every cover you've ever heard of. Yeah, she's Denise Richards. She's Denise Richards. And I was like, thank you. Because she's been kind of like, oh, I just wear jeans. Like, she's been playing herself down a lot. I think because she was trying to, like, feel her, you know, feel around in the in the first season and get her bearings. 
And I was yeah, like, waiting she's, for her she's brought some to go glam. Into, like, she did, but I was waiting she for really her has. to go into her like wild things like Denise. This is Denise. You know, I'm loving honestly, Denise Richards, they're trying to paint her as a villain. Denise Richards would have to punch a baby on live television for me to feel any sort of way about her because I just right? love her. Yeah. That baby would have deserved it though. Like yeah, there's no baby. like yeah, fuck the baby. A team you, Denise for life. Like you can't Denise. actually take her down. She's um, she's everything. She's Denise Richards. She's she's gone through so much worse than anything a housewife could do age six. She, Sorry. She's married to Charlie Sheen. Like Survive you have Charlie seen Sheen. things you will never be able to unsee after you've been in a marriage oh, with Charlie insane. Sheen. <laughs> Did you see? Wait, did you watch her reality show like ten years yes. ago? That yes, was, I love her dad. Her dad <laughs> sweet. Was sweet, and her mom. That was really sad. It was really. I mean, it's yeah. I I just think that she's she raises like a child with special needs. She just seems like a good person. She is a good person, and all yeah. the stuff that happens that's gonna happen with Brandy. I'm already like, I'm already need to like cover my. Brandy's ears. thirsty. I know she's thirsty, but I'm already gonna she be needs like. A drink of water. Hooked up. What's that? Um, they, like f- fully hooked up. I, I honestly I don't know but it, to me it doesn't there's no value in that that's not a dramatic yeah. storyline to be like we fucked it's like okay are you 12 otherwise it's <laughs> not news <laughs> no that's what it's like it's like is this is this 2006 like why is like that's the big twist is like she yeah, this is like, not a big deal women too maybe like that's and I'm already like dreading she said that like, like oh oh I don't want to know about that you know but what do you guys think of Erica she- what do you guys think of Erica and her 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 husband? Uh, I was truly shocked when he revealed that he was went to school with John Wayne's <laughs> child. <laughs> I was like, oh, he's truly he's from the like, mummy. Like, he's he is like in like, the century he, LA. Like back he grew like, up in LA when it was like dusty roads. Yes, like yeah, like <laughs> Ryan Cowell, like Town, Gold LA. Rush, LA, like <laughs> like Roman, like Jack Nicholson in Chinatown, no, like but Roman also- numerals, LA, <laughs> Jack Nicholson <laughs> in Chinatown. <laughs> when he left, like when she, remember when she was like, okay, well Tom's gonna Tom has to leave now. He like he has to go. I was like, where is he going? Like I know I, where was he going? Put a diaper on and go to bed. I was like, where? But like where? I had the same thought. I was like, where, where is he going to? Like the Pacific dining car. Like where is he going? <laughs> is he getting shoveled off like to the help to like guide him into like a walker and undress him? Like I was so confused, but I was happy that he was included and he was so happy to tell his stories. I, I know. I kind of love them together. He was so yeah, there's something. And then when Garcelle was, I love Garcelle. I Gar- love Garcelle is who I am when I go to LA. How about that? <laughs> Garcelle, when she said that. Kyle's outfit was hideous. I was like, thank God for her. She's like, what a fucking ugly dress. Yeah, I mean, I and I liked her being the ugliest like, outfit. I also like her being skirt. like, I like her being like, Kyle, Not you don't you. acknowledge me. I know, and Kyle's like, yes, I do. Cut to no footage. <laughs> <laughs> I also like that Kyle's oh, like, oh, sorry, go ahead. Go no, ahead. no, go ahead. No, I was just like, when Kyle was like, I didn't realize you'd be so fabulous i was like kyle like that's really it fuck in lady like, i know what's wrong with you I, what i like about kyle or is that kyle's like i have to shoot halloween and then Gar- and then cut to three episodes later girl so like oh yeah i'm on four movies and i have two twin beautiful sons like she's i'm living in america on- too i know and like it's um, she's on she's working a lot she books garcelle she books, books. Garcelle is booked, honey. And so is Denise Richards on Bold and the Beautiful. (laughs) I want Denise to be in my pilot, guys. Can can we put feelers? Ask her. Make it happen. She would do it. She would do it. I think she would be good on Prestige. I think she'd be, she's a Prestige actress. She is. She's also fucking funny. Like, Drop Dead Gorgeous. She was amazing in Drop Dead Gorgeous. Her comedic timing was incredible. Like, she's really funny and underutilized, I feel. Yeah. Starship Troopers. Are like an opportunity to shine, and I think you found it quite frankly. We need, like, we need speaking of Midsummer, we need like Ari Aster to cast her in his next movie as like a Please. bit, right? I mean, yeah, I, I, I'm we're clearly we're part of the Denise Richards cult, and I think that that's really I'm happy for us, right? Denise fan club, this is the first official meeting. <laughs> Do you think Wait, Kelly we talk about Ronnie? 
Yes, yes. Oh, do so- I like, I, I, so I, so, okay, so let's just back context of my experience with Real Housewives okay. is that I jumped into Real Housewives the season of the Berkshires where she calls, Lu- when Bethany calls Luann a slut. Oh. so that's my first that's my first experience ever with it and I was like this show is horrible it's offensive to women and so then I watched all of that and then got back to the <laughs> beginning and so that's so I never I never clicked with Bethany because I didn't grow up with Bethany so right. I liked Kelly Ben Simone but now I realized that she was acting unhinged yes she's demented no but I get I it Bethany it. If, to come in on that specifically that would be that would be jarring I was scarred, but I see that Bethany is like a very nice lady the first couple seasons. She is. I also love that episode because there's this amazing shot where you see Luann through the screen door and it's like pink magic hour outside in the Berkshires and she's just smoking a cigarette. Oh my God. After wow. Bethany calls her a slut and she's like, it's horrible. She's man. like, I can't believe they did that to me. <laughs> Jules, Jules, I know your dad is dead, but, and it's like, wow, this is really dark. Oh yeah, Jules. <laughs> It was so sad. Oh my God, Jules, who baked a fork into her calzone so she wouldn't. That was, have to so eat that it. was dark. That was so that dark. Was masterful. Just oh. wait. So I I interviewed Luann um once at a show. Yeah, yeah I interviewed Luann right after she did blackface, and famously, <laughs> oh and I was like, I was like, Lu- Luann, like that. um. Do you talk to any of your castmates? Like, have you talked to Jules? And she was like, Who the hell is Jules? <laughs> <laughs> Which I thought was very funny that she had no idea who I was talking about. Oh my oh, god! Like, also, cool? yeah, like, that was her Diana Ross moment. I was like, what the fuck? Iconic. That, yeah, no. Iconic. Um, iconic. And also, uh, Diana Ross didn't have an afro like that. No. But that's neither here nor there. Um, <laughs> also, also, to talk about this episode in the in the one moment we get Luann and Jill at that restaurant called Geisha, where that no one is in, in like oh, a, gosh. A and Luann, I, I miss Luann's like deep cut like shirts with her giant yes, with statement jewelry and yeah, her hair was kind wear of like turquoise anymore. No, because we've bullied her. We cyber bullied her. We did. Just she kind of had turquoise, but she used to have Reba hair. <laughs> she did. Yeah, and it, it looked, looked good. Even, oh. She looked great. She also, never Luann is bad, honestly. She never looks bad. No, she's Luann gorgeous. is one of the prettiest uh, people I've ever met in person. And uh, I've always I, she is. Yeah, she really is. I and I, I thought she was cute like on the show, but she's actually beautiful in person. I saw her at something a few months ago for my boyfriend had um for this dinner that we went to, and she came in late and she walked in and it was like she was like just vol- she was luminous. Luminous. She's stunning in person, and she's so tall. Yeah. A pillar of strength. Um, but she's like in the in this scene. Oh, Jordan Below's here. Hi, Jordan. Oh, Jordan. She's up with the purple dress with the one. What do you guys think of her Hampton look with the florals? That was a departure from <laughs> previous like Luann chicness. I was like, it was a little matronly for me. I won't lie. Mm-hmm. Oh, really? It was a little bit matronly. I was with I was Team Ramona on the. It was not. Didn't Ramona not say like look. it was not appropriate for a evening party a cocktail party honestly fair i also, don't that ramona it, like date, it just like it seemed like a daytime dress it rather did. than like a nighttime dress ramona also <laughs> in this episode is so endearing to me in scary island oh my god she's no she's as normal as she gets right she was yeah. so she excited so to which made me too. happy and knowing what we know now that like mario was probably cheating on her back then like oh absolutely because who also, when Luann says, why would I go celebrate her 17th anniversary for with a girl's trip? Like, that was kind of weird. It doesn't, I mean, it did not track now that you say it like that. Now that you say yeah. it, I'm hearing it. Right? Um, <laughs> but she... I thought Ramona was cute in this one. She when was, she was like, she found the Playboy guy, right? Or the guy who invented... Hooters him. guy. Hooters. Yeah, the owner of Hooters, which weird synergy, like, way later with Vanderpump Rules and, like, Jax and Britney connecting oh, yeah. over Britney's past as a Hooters girl like it's all connected the universe is just a cosmic mystical place but see, wait, did you did you like this part when um uh I wanted to get your opinion of when the, <laughs> Bethany reminds Ramona that she went when she was blackout drunk she went up to one of the Hooters waitresses and told oh. her to go to I hate that. I was mad at that. Oh, I hate I mean, it. You can't degrade women like that. Vicky Gumbelson's on the same fucking bullshit oh. with the sushi girl. It's like you can't just people are living their lives. Let them be. Like right? she's not your life. She's in the Virgin Islands at Hooters. 
Yeah, exactly. You think she's fucking miserable? You're miserable. <laughs> also, Vicky, side note, like, Corona truther number one. Oh, her all and Kelly OC, fucking... All, the all of them. Ladies, I'm sure. Kelly, Just Kelly, Dodd, are, like, Kelly Dodd and Vicky are the ones that are probably being the most vocal about it. I had to unfollow Kelly Dodd because I was like, I cannot take another video of a child saying, I want to go play on the swing. That was too much <laughs> for me personally. <laughs> What Kelly was Dodd she doing? Like, she was like Instagramming her children or just like random children? A stranger's child be uh, like with a with a with a swing <laughs> locked up being like, don't you want to go play? But you can't because of COVID. It's like you are a psychopath. <laughs> She's like angling for a job on that new OAN network. I swear to God. I mean, ATN, we fit. here for you. But <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Can you imagine uh, terrorizing a stranger's child to like <laughs> Push your hey. own warped political agenda. Hey, this kid just wants fucking play? candy. Don't you want to go play? He's like, yeah. She's like, cool. Danger, I'll danger. A, I'll give you a Diet Coke if you say yes. I'll give you a Coke. I'll give, I'll give you a Coke. A, I'll give you one I'll give you some pop. Coke. Someone um, wrote Lindsay Lohan with the refugee family energy. Oh, for <laughs> sure. I was thinking, I tweeted about that the other day because I just remembered that she got punched in the face on IG Live. Lindsay <laughs> Lohan? <laughs> I remember, okay, I was going to bed. In Paris. I was That's going a, to bed wa- <laughs> watching it unfold live. And I was like, no one was you saying did? anything about it. I was like in bed. It was like one in the morning and I was watching it unfold. And I was like, <laughs> wait a minute. What is happening? And then oh my God. at the end of the video, she's on the ground. Crying. Crying. And I was like, this, this, <laughs> this, how can you come back from this moment? How do you come back from that? Seemed it's not so to funny. really hurt her all that it much. Didn't hurt her. Really, people shockingly did not care. They care more about like Lohan Beach Club being bad than like the fact that she tried to abduct like two to abduct. children away from their mother. She tried to the and kept speaking and in that bad it. French accent. Yeah, it was hey, come, weird. Come, we no, will go to I the hotel. Tried to help you. Come with me. To I have money. No, I, like, I have. It's like what? <laughs> I and fun. of course, the the family does not understand a word of what this woman is saying in English or Arabic. So they're just like, but like dumbfounded. No, she's she, like a white well, devil is chasing us through the streets of Paris. She tells, she tells trying the to little steal boys, my children. She's like, I come, don't you want to come watch movies with me in the hotel? And he's like, no, no I don't. No, I'd rather be here on the street in the cold than in your <laughs> hotel room with you. She is, uh, I so I love Lindsay Lohan. I've watched every Lindsay Lohan property, her Oprah documentary. I watched mm. Beach Club. Like right. I find her endlessly fascinating. I think she of needs course. a camera on her Agreed. at all times. Yeah, she's amazing. Times. But that was, I mean, also Lindsay I mean, COVID. Her COVID when so. What uh, is she saying? Well, no, this like two weeks into us all being locked down, Lindsay went yeah. took to Instagram and was like, "Stay inside." Do it. I'm going to, I can cook. I love to cook. I brought a bunch of crabs. I have a crab. I have crab. So I cook it now. I'm like, oh my God. Like cooking crab with like her cohorts, whoever they may be. Dubai. Dubai. But I was like, I was pretty certain that she just found out about COVID at that moment. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Do you guys remember in Lindsay Lohan Beach Club where she saw that they were cooking crabs for dinner and she took one of the crabs and she was like, I'm a Disney girl like Ariel. And then she put the crab in the ocean and it died. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the lobster. Yeah. The lobster, lobster, lobster scream lobster. heard around the world. And when it, like, I feel like they added the sound effect, but I hope that they didn't when she, like, dropped it and it was like, <laughs> so wild. <laughs> around to the camera and went, saving. <laughs> she turns, faces the camera. On a reality show, and she goes, "Me saving lobsters. What do you think about that?" And then she saunters off. Iconic. I, Lindsay Lohan is the most iconic. I wish that Lindsay Lohan was on Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Oh my god! Let's talk about that. Oh Let's my talk about god. that. Let's talk about yeah. it. Or she, New she, York. She. I don't think she could survive New York. No, I agree with you. They would destroy. <laughs> I her. think she'd get bullied by Dorinda. <laughs> Unless Jill Zarin came back and they could like tag team because they're friends. Like they go like. Ooh, back. wait, really? Oh wait, Dina I have Lohan. another pitch. Yes. What yeah. about Dina Lohan, Lindsay Lohan, Dale Tinsley combo? Uh, think about it. Think about yes, it. That's all I want. 
mother oh daughter God. like vacation and like that it could yes. be like a hbo or not hbo <laughs> that hbo show and couples therapy the vh1 <laughs> show that's like couples therapy but just with, like daughter. mothers and daughters i would yeah. love that with daughter. candace though and a candace yeah why not mm-hmm. yes candy burris and yeah do oh, you i'm fully in oh my god candy burris and her mom mama joyce her mom remember the, the play oh that was a mother's a love <laughs> a lot a lot it was a lot um did it did it portia audition for it and sing her his eyes are on the sparrow yeah portia <laughs> portia she made it i think she made the cut yeah of course she did she better. she's on the show she's on the main cast um <laughs> do, you, do you think i um i'm i said this to laura i feel like roni should have one gay guy in it i agree i think that i i, I agree i think that there should be men on housewives like, like husband you like a time. big character i yeah. think so mm-hmm. why not i think it'd be I, iconic right like a really like dark amazing like dark energy gay who's married to some rich older guy who's just like you know who they should have is who? nate burkus and his husband don't they have a place in new york they just got one in West Village, according to Architecture Digest. Yes, All I that. looked at that and I saved like their patio cute. photo to my like desktop. I do too. I do. like gold. They should be the gay couple on Roni. They're like blindingly beautiful. Yes, mm-hmm. that's what we photos. love. Yeah, yeah, we need to see it. Um, yeah, that'd be sick. Also, I would love a Real Housewives of Chicago starring Tinsley. Yes. Why hasn't Chicago been? Because no. they were in another franchise, right? Like another franchise explored. Was Married to Medicine oh, originally Chicago? A hundred days. Hundred days of summer. Oh, hundred days brief of summer. Okay, yeah. Chicago that reality like show. One. Oh, I've never seen that. I it was like, it. what is this? It was like, if it's not Housewives or Vanderpump Rules, like I'm not interested. Yeah, yeah I need the branding. Yeah, I need Real Housewives of Chicago, hugely. Right, because you know there are people that would be great. Like, there's people that are, would be down. Well, the to money do it. is like nuts because the houses that you buy for like less than what you'd have in New York for a one bedroom apartment are right. huge. Like, mm-hmm. Lakeshore Drive is glamorous as hell. Yes. Yeah, yeah, like, like shopping oh, is insane on right? like off of Lakeshore Lake, and like Lakeshore Dr- Yeah, oh, there's like a Chicago God. society. There right. is mm-hmm. definitely there, there is for sure. Well, because all the Midwesterners all the- go to Chicago. Right. The Midwesterners, but then also like the pro sports teams. There's so many pro Ooh. sports and like oh, yeah. you know, a lot Big of color. like wags energy. Um, oh my gosh. They were, I'm from Philly area. I'm from Philly, not New Jersey. Philly, <laughs> Philly. Philly, Philly cheese stick. I'm from Philly the- in the house. Balls up for Philly. Balls up for Philly. <laughs> but they were going to do, <laughs> they were going to do a Real Housewives of Philly, I think. <gasps> they and were? Grace, Grace Kelly's niece because grace kelly is like from the main line of philly like they're like they were like one of the big families she wow. was asked to do it i think because she's like a big they have a huge like there's a huge like philly society and she was like no way that's beneath me and so none of like the socialite women did it because she didn't do it that's i think i heard that wow <laughs> that would have been amazing because philly respect. has like, crazy, yeah. like history. i don't know that's I was like just, old, the oldest money, right? That goes back to like the beginning of America, kind of money. But there's but no wonder them. they like don't want to do it. They're like, we don't want yeah. anyone <laughs> looking into our past in this way. Oh my gosh! Yeah. Oh, <laughs> that's why I wanted even more. Yeah, Real Housewives of Boston. <laughs> oh my god, I wish they'd be that like great. Mark Wahlberg and his Wahlburgers. <laughs> like I don't even know. Did you oh, ever watch that MTV show about like just? boston like a crew of boston friends getting like yes. shit faced all the time i think what it was, was after called? ct became famous they had one right wicked single wicked single wicked, wicked, wicked single. single they, they should do the of salem. drink yeah, they should do carlton could move to salem so Wait, Mo- monice Mons says that they worked on that show Mons barrera no oh. <gasps> Months. We tell us everything, months. Wait, what did they do on the show, Laura? They just like got wasted. They would just binge. They and would have drink to the point of throwing up and like have Boston accents. Like it was like after Jersey so Shore. Much. Yeah, Uh-oh. it was right. Okay. And I think it just was so dark that MTV 
just kind of like ended up throwing it away like they would air it at like 2 p.m on like a Sunday afternoon mm. and then like you couldn't really see it and then it had it had it on demand like when I had cable but then it kind of just disappeared because it was truly oh just like people drinking themselves to the point of like to brain death? damage that's yeah. sad well hunting spinoff <laughs> Goodwill Hunting, too. Uh, yes, famously. Famously, Goodwill Hunting and, um, yeah, that other movie about the town. The, yeah, the town. Blake Lively, Blake Lively plays an oxy. Blake at Lively it. baked brownies. She goes, I and want to go with you. That was the first day that she shot. That was her first day of shooting, apparently. Really? Yeah. She, apparently, Blake, like, went on, like, a, a ride along with Ben Affleck and they, they, ro- they rode through Charlestown together and, like, like like wow. took in the scene and like met women to get into that role Wild. right i love i i'm from massachusetts i'm from near Bo- north of boston so oh. i have a lot of proud for for where the you, town where are you You're from an asshole i'm a mass hole yeah lawrence mass okay my mom is from salem and oh word my whole family lives the, in the which north is where? um and she well she grew up in new hampshire but my whole family lives in like Marblehead and Ah yes, Easy. Essex County and Essex County. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, we we stand, we stand. Um, the hooligans that are yes, Guinness drinkers. You know. Uh, well, I'm not. Someone just said meth is not that bad. <laughs> meth is not that bad. Oh wait, you know who's from somewhere near me? Um, who's from from Methuen, Massachusetts? Was Dana of Real Housewives of Beverly Hills? Oh my God, twenty five thousand. She was from Methuen. Twenty five thousand. Yeah, twenty five thousand. Twenty five thousand. Can you believe, Can you it? believe it? And when she when she was like, she was like, "Don't worry, because it's like we're girls, and like I'm there for you, and I have your back, because we're girls." Yeah, we're sisters. She says that's a Kyle sisters. Cam and so like, sisters. What? They're yeah. like, we, also, hate, we don't like yeah. sisters around here. <laughs> we also hate our sisters. Hello. Yeah, we hate <laughs> our problem. sisters. The wrong thing to say. <laughs> also, Dana also lit a cigarette with a restaurant candle. Yeah, that's a absolute move. Said, I drink a lot, and I love it. And I fuck a lot. Fuck a lot. <laughs> and her ex was like, her fiance was like cheating on her, right? Yeah. So sad. So sad. She had a tragic, she was like in and out really quick in the blink of an eye. <laughs> she reminds me, so Dana, so Sutton is the rich Dana. How about that? Ooh, totally. True. What do you think of Sutton? I like her. I think that she is good for the show. We I need agree. people who yeah. will disagree. I'm sorry, we can't be getting along. I don't no. want friends. I want no. enemies. We didn't so come- I appreciate, yeah, I appreciate how hysterical Sutton, so Sutton's always on the verge of tears. I, I love, love it. Yeah. That's me. <laughs> she keys it up. What the amazing thing too is like when you start the fire and then you like can't handle it. And so then you cry. Let the mouse go. Like, let let the mouse, the mouse go. Go. I also love when they're pulling up for Teddy's event and she goes, I'm going to fucking lose it. And Teddy- I was like, I'd be crying too. <laughs> Sounds like a nightmare. <laughs> Having Wait, to go to Teddy's like- retreat. Uh. Oh, when she went to Teddy. I thought you were talking about when she went to the other party where she thought the makeup guy who used to, didn't he used to be Rachel Zoe's makeup guy? Joey? Oh, I, I think know. so, and yeah. She thought that Joey was going to be there and she like fucked him over or something. Yeah, they had some yeah. shady business deal. Which I have to know exactly the yeah, financials I need, of. We need to yeah. know that. Wait, let's talk about Dorit and PK. Oh, sorry. Do you have to? Do I have to get off soon? No, we just uh, have a, we have a couple minutes, and then we have another guest. But let's talk about Dorit and PK. Do you, what do think, you think that they're? Do you think it's a house of cards? Yes. <laughs> um, absolutely. I want to trust them, but I'm also easily fooled by like glamour on these shows. Like I'm just like, oh, they're in a new house and they're renovating it, so they just must be rich. They, I mean, what do you think? Do I? Do you think they're- I, I, I can't put my finger on what's wrong. I can't. I don't understand because her accent is not real, and like they shouldn't be renovating a six million dollar house in Encino. Like these things all <laughs> make sense, but yeah, I. But yes, I. Yeah, I trust her. She. I guess she's. A, but are they scam artists? No. Mm, I think they might. Be. What was the claim? What did Camille say last year that they were being sued? Oh. Yeah. We we not. Allow we, our new guests to the stage. Oh my God! Hello. Hi, Katie. I like, I'll get off. No. Okay. <laughs> Wait. So, Zwei, where can people follow you? 
Yeah, oh, tell follow me at Zway F on Instagram or Zway at Twitter. I'll write in the comments too. And you can't. You're not gonna. Um, use and it. you write for uh, what's you write for TV? You write for Do- yes. I write for Showtime's Jesus and Mero. Yeah. I voice Kamala Harris on a Cartoon President and Susan Shepard and Tori Hughes on Tuning Out the News. And please watch your hilarious web series, Baited. Yes, it's on my Twitter and my YouTube. Truly some of the funniest shit I've ever seen. So thank you. You're so sweet. Please go on that. It's so funny. Thank you so much for being here. You're the best. Yeah, thanks thanks for having me. Bye, guys. Bye. 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 Hi, Danny. Hi, Danny. Uh, Hi, guys. How are you? So nice to meet you you, because we met. Right, right. We met at uh, uh, the Watch What Crappens. Watch What Crappens Live, but to see you again and in core is another thing, you know <laughs> and first of all can i just say i love the buca de beppo by dorit background and right. the, uh, kelly ben simone i mean i truly feel at home it had to happen <laughs> i need every day i'm like why can't i go just i need to be in the dorit lemon room at buca de beppo like I know, my soul I'm, is being called there i'm inviting myself along whenever you guys go i need to be yes with you. Yeah, we're, we, the, we'll, the three of us will go. We'll make a res. Please. Oh my God. Well, lock, I think we can go to restaurants pretty soon in LA. So it might be. I think that it might be open because I was saying on the pod, I like, I was looking at the Yelp reviews during last week's episode, like <laughs> late at night, being like, what's the deal here with this buka? Like, what's the best buka in LA? And I think it is the Encino one. And I think it's open because someone had posted a review like six hours prior that was like, it's amazing. Like, I felt like, we were the we had the restaurant to ourselves. <laughs> also, I think Carrie, you were the one who posted this, but didn't Dorit like post promo on her Instagram for the Buca de Beppo? So I feel yeah, like it must be open. She wrote Beverly uh, <laughs> Beverly Beach by Buca de Beppo, <laughs> and she wrote Beverly Beach X Buca de Beppo. She wore Terry onesie like a full blown like jumpsuit, and then she I think over Memorial Day celebrated Memorial Day the way any good American would by catering her poolside hang with only buca de beppo. <laughs> nothing you want to eat, nothing you would die to eat more than like a hot baked ziti on a summer day. <laughs> no, <And> look, <laughs> I love a buca de beppo, but that spread that she was showcasing on her Instagram was very sad. It was like the the uh, um what do they call the tomato and basil and mozzarella? I can't think of the name of it, but Ooh, it was just the also caprese. sad. The caprese it was, was a, sad. It was a dry caprese. There was nary a drizzle in sight. <laughs> what I want to do at a hot Encino pool party with no shade is, <laughs> is take my shirt off and eat ziti and then jump into the pool. That's, a, that's not the beef first food. thing I want to do. <laughs> Some good garlic bread and chicken parmesan yeah. <laughs> before you hop in the pool. Um, Something like a hot melted cheese. Yeah. How far away is it? I don't feel like it's that far. You know, I've been watching that Selling Sunset on uh, Netflix and one of the women lives in in Encino and she keeps mentioning it. I'm like, oh my God, I feel like the world is throwing Encino at me lately in all different outlets. No, wait, I've been to Encino. Yeah. I I worked a job. I did a, I worked a job. I, uh, I... (laughs) I you're in like, like Ryan a, Murphy's Hollywood. Right? I'm in Hollywood. <laughs> I worked no, a job once at Encino, kid. I worked a, I've been doing Encino. I know Encino. Um, I, <laughs> I uh no, I did like I was like a PA on a shoot there once when I needed money. And it was a, a whole other world. Yeah. So knowing that Dorit lives there actually makes sense. It's really nice. It's beautiful. The views are insane. It's really nice. You can get really nice houses there I think for probably cheaper than just like Los Angeles proper I feel like all of the Beverly Hills women are so did you say take fountain yeah take fountain take fountain take fountain Take 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 fountain. I should have taken fountain (laughs) (laughs) it was crazy traffic it was crazy traffic everyone was talking like Kim Richards in Hollywood (laughs) they were chilling I wish Kim Richards was in it I mean she's a good actress give her a role she's a great actress where are her roles didn't you post that video from Black Snake Moan recently? Where she's, yes, like, she, actually she's in crazy. one scene and she's really good in one scene. She plays Christina Ricci's mother and uh, she's great. She could do like some good, the movie wasn't good, but she's good in it. Yeah, she's like, she's like working at a grocery store, right? And she's like, you peddle your pussy out to every dick and John. <laughs> every, like, <laughs> like what? <laughs> and she's just labeling all the foods in the aisle yeah. like with the prices. She's a true yeah. pro. She's bringing slut pig energy to the role. 
<laughs> method method actress. she's good i would argue that she's maybe like the best actress in this world like there i mean in terms of raw talent like i think mm -hmm. i agree with you i think she's the best eileen's good in like a soap opera eileen's great in a soap opera way but no kim is her kim has like that she has she's like a truly good actor yeah, yeah. you're right i think kyle's not great I'm but. excited to see Kyle though in Halloween. I know we're Me supposed to be too. talking about New York, but we're all no. It's all it's all like it's loose. Okay. It's loose no, in these parts. Kyle was so good in the original Halloween, so I can't wait to see what she has in store. I'm a, I'm happy that she's uh, recreating the bang look because uh, it was mm -hmm. so seemingly important to her character work. Right, <laughs> she definitely <laughs> she suggested that. that. <laughs> she was like, she was like, I think she should just do this. Um. <laughs> So, Danny, what what is your history with this episode of Roni Scary Island? I mean, Scary Island to me is like the best of the whole, all of Housewives franchises. It's also like where everything started. And I think if you look at those three, the three episode arc of Scary Island, it has like everything we like from Housewives. Like it has the Luann music career that is now a staple on these shows. And mm -hmm. uh, then it has just like the vacations that, you know, we get every season. And there's like drama, there's laughs, there's absurdity. Like it's truly just like, it, I, to me, I, I literally do, I, I joke about it, but I really do watch it at least like once a year. Like I love the three episodes and, um. It's just great. You know, I actually interviewed Sonia Morgan about Scary Island like a year ago. And it was it was a crossover episode with the Bravo podcast uh, that they have. And I was asking her these questions and they were recording the audio. Uh, and some of the audio got returned back to me with certain things edited out. And so that leads me to believe I hope no one's going to go share this online or anything because I don't want to get in trouble. But um, guys. Cave of Secrets, everyone. The vault is open and it's we're closing it. Yeah, no, yeah. No one, no I, know, I need to know here. the truth. And that's, I knew that you would know the truth because I saw full confession. I'd seen your post on Twitter where you were like, release the footage. And I was like, he knows things. <laughs> we need him. Okay. We need him I'm now so, more than ever. <laughs> because that more than ever before, that was the moment where I was like, oh, there's secrets here, right? Like that, because. Yeah. Cause I had asked her things and I, there, it wasn't like she revealed too much. Like she revealed something about Kelly, but I don't really remember. Cause I was just thinking, oh, I'll go listen to this back when I get the audio back. And then when right. I got the audio, because I wasn't in control of it, it was like a crossover thing. So when I got it back and there was just like a lot of stuff edited out, I was like, oh, that's something's up here. Like they're yeah. trying to hide a lot of the, the oh, secrets. Whoa. So what, what are they protecting? What do they, they think I, they're protecting? Like, there was something she said about Kelly being escorted, which I think like that is the biggest thing that they do try to hide of like what exactly happened with Kelly. Because even I would think in the episode, they would have at least shown like a quick cutaway of Kelly at, at airport or, or, or yeah. saying goodbye or leaving. Like there was nothing from that next day when she left. It's just, it just cuts ahead. She was just gone. Someone, there has to be something like something. yeah and then the next episode when they when they all realize she's gone it all it seems very like acting like they're like oh she left in the middle of the night like you know what i mean so i that actually makes a lot of sense like you think she was like medically like taken she, out helicoptered air backed well and then there's that whole story about how like jill ran into her in the airport and I think if this were to happen now, then there would have been like camera phone footage of Kelly and Jill running into each other at the airport. Like somebody would have taken out a camera phone. Mm -hmm. um, but I still think there has to be footage. Like there had to have been a producer with Kelly, right? Yeah. Right. Um, well, who do you think like, cause I guess it's Sonia who kind of spent the most time with Kelly at the dinner mm -hmm. and then really sussed out like, oh, this person's <laughs> Fully crazy. Yeah, that's the thing that and I want. Sonia is the first one that's like, you guys, like, we can't actually speak with her anymore because it's unfair because she's like lost it. And it truly takes it's takes one to know one energy because if anyone's gonna go off like the true deep end, it's Sonia Morgan who can like be sent into a mystical realm with like just seeing like a letter on the wall. Yeah, did so you see like Sonia's <laughs> face? Like, I was watch it because i've watched it two days i watch it like once a year or two pretty much and i always forget how the, the little cutaways to sonia's face and you see this like stony 
not stony more like just placid like okay like you see the light going on in her head like she's truly unraveled and she's not well like and it's so weird it's like it it was kind of gave me like chills seeing sonia be like this she she gets it before anyone does because yeah, that's so because bethany's so like ang- i think bethany knows that she's kind of in, has is not well but i think bethany's so defensive because kelly's just been so horrible to her so she's not thinking with compassion which i totally get because kelly was horrific to her but <laughs> but you see sonia just be like oh guys you know what i mean and then they all start real and that was and always sonia like sonia being the voice of reason is wild too knowing why we know her now and mm-hmm. I, you mentioned bethany and i have to say like bethany when she was pregnant was to me like peak bethany because she was much more relaxed in her interviews and her confessionals and so she was to me she was like more naturally funny because she wasn't trying so hard to be funny and and i like her a lot but it, it's it, she had an ease when she was pregnant that she doesn't have otherwise yeah it saw it, it like I think also everything she went through with her dad I feel like this season she really had no fucks to give and she was just kind of like you know what I mean and everything with Jill I think she was just like on the show and kind of like I and also because she's carrying a human so she's like I yeah. can't get too stressed she was so soft going with the flow she was um but do you okay so we were talking a little about like who did she who planted this when she's like accusing bethany of planting the stories danny do you is that was that the thing about kelly like beating up her boyfriend remember that came out like that new story or something where she they got into like some fight yeah there was some physical i i mean i think with all of kelly's stuff it's hard to suss out like what is true and what's not because I mean, even to this day, like I'll sometimes listen. Kelly was just on a, a podcast recently that I listened to. I don't remember what it Whoa. was, but um, would be like in a podcast. <laughs> it's wild. It's she was also on my show like uh, years a, a couple of years ago or something. Oh my but god, I need to. That's... It's but she like gives a different story every time. Like so, there's no, there's no. Um, I can't speak today. My mind is absent-minded, but um, no, it's, it's an, there's no, it's she's so always changes her story. Everything she says is fucking different every single time she goes to tell the same story. And so it's hard to know what's true about like the ex-husband, about the ex-boyfriend, about her uh, relationship with Bethany. It's just a different every fucking time she gives an interview. Yeah. What does she sound like these days? Like just her voice, like <laughs> Crazy. Is, is she still like kind of all over the place or? All over the place. Yeah, and like she still will will talk about the show as if like it's a show and she was acting like that's how she sort of presents no. it a lot of times. But it's like you were escorted off the island, and if it was acting or whatever, then you were I would have met you were it's bad. Fully flanked by security guards at one elbow with a light touch leading you to a ship. So you, she got the, 51 50 off of an island. But then here's yeah. where I like, this is where I start to lose it. When you really look into like her career and her, she's done things that to me, like, I don't know, a person like her wouldn't be able to accomplish. Like she has books. She's, I believe she's graduated from college. Like they mentioned in the episode. Columbia. And Columbia. And so it's like, there's th- nothing adds up. Like it's all makes little sense. She also, and her vocabulary is so... I mean, I think she wasn't really in this realm in this people episode. Are, people are saying in the comments that those books are bad. I've never actually read them, but I know oh, she does have her multiple book, books. I Can Make You Hot is truly, <laughs> it's a must read. And I thought I used to own it because someone gave it to me and then they never wanted it back. And then I kind of perused through it and it was all about just like how to be hot, which is mostly just like you need to think that you're hot. But then also the second uh, half of it was like her recipes. And I knew it, how dark things got when it like I just opened up to one recipe and she was like Teddy's favorite omelet. And it was like boiled tofu and scrambled eggs. And I was like, no one actually would like this. And you're saying that because you're like trying to like gaslight your kid who like you know, Teddy was kind of like pudgy or whatever. And Kelly like poked at that a bit. And I was just like, no, like this is a psychotic person like writing a book. And then I guess I gave it away because I was going to try and bring it out tonight. And they looked at my bookshelf and I realized I too must have said, I need this out of my life. (laughs) Or it's missing. You gave it to someone in need. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's the kind of thing. It's like the sisterhood of the traveling pants. The book mm -hmm. goes where it goes on its own journey. So I hot somewhere else right now because of that. Yeah. Um, um, my, I, I don't know if you guys felt this. Like, I felt this in my marrow how dark it was when she is talking to C on her cell phone. And she's like, Mike, hey, hey, it's my kid. It's my kid. And then you see her off to the side and she goes, see, I'm so sorry I missed riding yesterday. <laughs> see? <laughs> see, I'm so sorry I missed riding yesterday. Also, I love how she goes, thank you so much to like every, all like all the, times. the, all the yeah. like staff on the boat and everything. Thank you so Have you guys ever done a deep dive into her real estate videos on Instagram? No. No. Uh, I don't know if she still does them, but she was doing real estate and she was creating videos for the houses that she was hoping to sell, but she wasn't the realtor on a lot of the videos that she was presenting on Instagram. So it was basically just like a woman in an open house being like, hey, I'm here at 5140 uh, Sweets, sir. Um, no, <laughs> like she's just trying crazy. to get a portfolio of like to show that she could be good at doing this if she had a oh. house to sell. Wow. I, please go and check it out when we're oh, done here. Just yeah. like go to her Instagram and go back a while because these go back about a year or maybe right. even longer. And they I are I just assumed. Amazing. Yeah, I think I just saw them on Instagram because I'm pretty sure I follow her. And then I just assumed like, oh, she's in real estate, like classic moves. <laughs> So for a while she wasn't she now i think she is she has gotten her realtor license i believe but well, early on pushed everyone that. into thinking that she'd had some great properties it worked on me i was like amazing love that for her she should join the oppenheim group yes. and be on selling put sunset, selling sunset. <laughs> put her up against maya that'd be fun oh i um, love it i also are they in direct competition with the agency you know, I'm surprised they haven't done an agency Hi. Oh. Um, show. Our next oh, guest is here. Our next guest is here. We can merge Hello. for a while. Yeah. Hi. Oh, I'll leave. Sorry. No, oh, no. don't worry. Welcome, no Ray. Worries. Welcome. Hi. 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 Good. Hi. How are you? Ray Stanny is here. Hi, Ray. I'm Carrie. We've never met, but thank you so much for being here. I'm so excited you're here. Um, Hi. I think something might be off with the audio. Okay. Yeah, it seems a little crunchy or something. Maybe it's my earrings. I'm trying to I always have trouble with those AirPods. Whenever, whenever I try to use the audio in the AirPods, it always is weird. It's weird? Okay. So then I'll just disconnect. You know, I just tried to pretend I was rich with one fucking... <laughs> <laughs> they look great. They look good. <laughs> Um, we were just talking about um, Kelly Ben Simone. So we we're doing. I'm. So we're we're all gonna do a deep dive into her real estate Instagram videos because they're wild. Did you know that she does? Did you do you follow her on Instagram, Ray? No, I I purposely do not follow any housewives on Instagram except for Kenya Moore because she's the love of my life. But no, amazing. Yeah. I love that you love Kenya too, Ray, because I love her. I love her so much. She's excellent television. Perfect, yeah. perfect, perfect. Um, I was also gonna say I found a parallel between Kelly leaving and Katie leaving on Potomac. Ooh, and they were in uh, um, oh, right, 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 right. Down and then an exit. Yes, ah. just like just like mysteriously vanishing. <laughs> and, and no one and katie's boy or her fiance was like i have no idea where she is and they were all just like on like they were literally looking for her on the beach and they See, made more of a meal of that than they did in with kelly leaving which is what yeah. i think danny to your point that if this had happened now they just that would have it would have been like that with kelly I feel like we would have seen producers if it happened now and they would at least like kind of dip their toe into breaking the fourth wall but you know, back then they were so afraid to like reference production or or anything yeah. like that. Um, like pre mental illness, like breaking through, like so. Also, it just like was better if you just thought Kelly was like wacky and loved her yeah. jelly beans and then had to leave, <laughs> like right. rather than being like she was, really like. I was kind of alarmed by that. I was like, so we not gonna step in because she's really like yeah it's too much i was like mm, 
if Sonia <laughs> is the voice of reason here, yes. you need to, somebody in production needs to send her to bed. Bethany shouldn't send her to bed. Right. <laughs> should have. She needs like an expert to send her to bed. Right. <laughs> <laughs> It's also so oh. funny, you mentioned Bethany saying, you know, go to sleep. And it's so crazy to think that like, we we pass like seven more years and then Bethany's referencing that line again. I think it was last season in Miami when Bethany said, go to sleep again. And it's like so weird that these women are now doing their own catchphrase work. Mm. <laughs> it's like so funny. It is, it, that, is, that is like, feels like inception of some kind. Yeah. Um, <laughs> It was uh, it was amazing though to see that uh, Bethany has not stopped talking shit from like the minute she got on that show. <laughs> like, I, no. I was like, mm -hmm. oh, skinny girl stuff, great, yeah, yeah, yeah. great. I did I did like when Kelly, I, I even though it was like an insane reaction, I kind of loved that when Kelly saw the merch bag of all the skinny girl stuff, and she was like. <laughs> <laughs> Why would she do it? And she, goes, she goes, I don't understand this girl. And I was like, <laughs> I kind of admired her for just being like, I don't, why is she hawking her shit at me? <laughs> she does, she does I, the I, horror I, movie. Like, I saw it in the bed. <laughs> and like, it was so impersonal. Like my knee, like my knees were in the back. And then she lit, has no choice but to lit. She's laying, also her underwear is out. Like her, her legs are like up <laughs> and her legs are like splayed. And she's just like, <laughs> She has like 30 foot long legs that are just like loft the bed onto the floor and, and one of her legs is just like she has like restless leg syndrome and she's just going <laughs> and <it's> <laughs> and <laughs> at least weeping. Kelly was at least Kelly was calling out the product placement though at an early That's time. True. She was like, enough of this fucking true. skinny girl yeah. shit. Kelly has moments of like extreme clarity in the knockdown. <laughs> like when she's telling Sonia, she's like, let it go. And yes. she too fast. And I was like, I was just gonna say that. moly. <laughs> I was just gonna say Kelly was the first person to be like, hey Sonia, mm -hmm. the Morgan ship is go like she, that Kelly was the she totally <laughs> called Brenda she Brenda caught her number. Brenda. Kelly she was ahead of her time. <laughs> and that I had that moment where I was like, whoa, like she's she's back in like on, on earth in this moment, you know? Like she's yeah. like she gets it, and then she went away again. But it's like she's going in and out of like. She also was spot on about Alex when she was trying to photograph <laughs> Alex. I mean, she looks looking weird, man. And Her Alex mouth is too tight. Alex is like, Johan face. Johan face. Johan face. Johan face. I, have, I have the quote. This quote that she said, she went, she got right into Alex's face, which was so like uncomfortable. Alex was terrified of her. On the beach. Oh, yes, totally. I have to be honest, Kelly made me extremely uncomfortable. I don't know what I was walking into. <laughs> like she <laughs> was traumatized by that photo shoot. Kelly gets right in Alex's face and she goes, Think of Johan, that little baby face. <laughs> like, mm, mom. Like with your soft face. And then Alex is, she just walks and like, what are you supposed to do with that? Well, she slithered like a snake, apparently. It was so <laughs> weird. It was just. Oh, yeah. And then Alex, I have the audio of Alex laughing when she's like, oh, no. like laugh a little. Hold on. Sent straight to hell. <laughs> we were in hell in that moment. Where does everyone land on Alex ultimately? Like looking back, do you hate her or do you oh. where do we land on her? I I you just don't saying, hate her. But she's kind of like Miranda energy. Is yeah. it, well, she's more awkward than saying. Miranda. Miranda didn't Yum. make me feel uncomfortable in my body, right? <laughs> Alex, Alex made me hate my limbs when she was walking on the beat. I was like, damn, fuck legs. Legs are terrible. <laughs> Why do we? This is awkward. Alex made me feel just desolation when I looked at her. <laughs> <laughs> 
I almost am astonished that she and her husband agreed to the show. Like, I know they were like, especially her husband, like super, super fame thirsty, but right. how can you not see how awkward you people are together on camera and keep going? They would have stayed on that show if they got kept on that show. Like, <laughs> so I, do, I do respect that they gave it like the good old Hollywood try. Like after they got booted off Roni, then they went to the marriage boot camp. Camp. They and did. Then, and then I think they probably thought, like, let's see if we could get another show. And then they weren't able to in like six months. And they were like, let's just move back to another country and give yeah, it like up. We're gonna go and to they Australia. gave it up. Yeah. Now yeah. Alex has her master's degree in psychology. Wait, for yeah. real? Simon and graduated Simon from law school. school. So is that a is that a post Roni accomplishment? Mm -hmm. Oh wow, good for them, actually. That's actually really cool. I'm into it. Ray, I was saying before that I friended Alex on Facebook in 2012 <laughs> and Simon, like I'm friends with both on their personal Facebooks and like every so often she'll post a status update and I'll be like, oh yeah, I'm friends with Alex McCord. <laughs> <laughs> she just posted that she's got her master's in psychology from an Australian university. Is it like just like, like endlessly normal stuff? I was, I was reading a few. It's just like, it's mostly her like posting like pithy little like posts about like the rain in Australia and like how much rain they've had and like she's she says mum now with a u uh, and she, oh really and she's just All right, like revoke oh. her master is fuck that right. she's, like, she's like you the bush though, she's first the bushfires now the locusts have the accent she's gonna quickly adopt whatever accent of whatever yeah. country she's, she's living gonna in. Madonna it's so bad so mm -hmm. bad so I bad. know that Bravo would never like pay the money to fly her in for a scene but I wish they would like I just for one scene like I, I always like when they come back for just one scene like I don't need them around the whole season but I want to see like Kelly Ben Simone Alex McCord I want to see him pop in for one scene give us a little update and then go away and Alex is the one that I feel like they it'll never happen because Bravo just wouldn't pay for her flight <laughs> yeah <laughs> they should send they should send everyone to australia and then they could have oh. alex just pop in there you do like a girl's oh, yeah. their yeah. big trip that sh they should do a trip to australia wait yeah, they, 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 they go always go to mexico Coast. they go to mexico every year and it's like send them to australia what city in australia does she live in does she live in melbourne because if she lives in melbourne maybe she could pop up on the melbourne Housewives Housewives of melbourne yes which is really good yeah it's so it good. is really good yeah yeah why uh, but a deck of cards do you know why bravo didn't air melbourne let me i'm looking up where she, i think you they know, live in i watch the melbourne housewives online and they don't like edit any of the swearing out or anything no and it's, it's like so much better like, yes it is. i they wish like everyone words and like we get to hear them like with kenya like i knew there was a c word in there but like i didn't get to hear the fury that's sitting with tanya <laughs> but like on melbourne i'm like yeah she did call you a cut in the bathroom she did <laughs> they always say get fucked like yeah. i say that to my boyfriend get as fucked. a joke like get fucked get fucked get fucked get did fucked. you guys ever watch real housewives of vancouver no i didn't, I know didn't that watch existed. that one no. there i think there's one season it's a wild season i would it's on youtube what is the right personality of a city like vancouver i don't know anything there, about vancouver i didn't either they're all like very they live in these like insane it's very wealthy there i guess and they have like some one of them lives on like a private island that only like mega rich people i think like where Prit, Mer, harry and megan were staying oh, and like, oh yeah and like the, one like, of them gets places the prince by, edward island i think that's it i i don't know where that but one of the housewives gets places by geography sea. i'm revealing myself right now <laughs> she, she like she gets around by like seaplane like that's one Wait, of the, for real like, like, like to her, and from her home like her son goes off to college and she's like she has like these hot sons kyle would kill herself if she saw that right <laughs> she would die right Wait, so Laura, you the, what was like the personality of those people they were i mean they were pretty like they were they were pretty brutal with each other like they were very like i i don't remember i only watched like a few episodes but they were it was they didn't fuck around like they were formidable casts i was like kind of into it so canadian politeness is a lie yeah they were not i mean one the one that had lived on the island was like and she was kind of demented and she was like a boy mom you know so she was like very like i'm a boy she had like five sons oh okay got it she was just like kind of like they all love me you know what i mean and like she uh -huh. was kind of like 
So putting her in a group of women was the yeah. best worst possible thing. Exactly. Got so, it. Got so, it. Got so it was a lot of, I don't know, but it's on YouTube. So I think you guys should try to look it up. It's pretty scary. Yeah, there's so much I need to avoid, like so many responsibilities to avoid. So thank you. This is very exciting. I now can shirk responsibilities for eight more episodes. Right. Wasn't there a Melbourne housewife couple that like went to go fly and get cheese in a seaplane? Or am I just like imagining that? Is it like the dark hair woman with that dog that she thought was like so gorgeous and she brought everyone? Everyone's her name Lid- Lydia. 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 Yeah. Get fucked, Lydia. Lydia. Get fucked, Lydia. Get fucked, Lydia. <laughs> she and her, like, elegant Italian dog. She's Italian. She kept talking about how Italian she was. Yeah. Right. Um, Literally, you're not Italian if you live in Australia. Like, can we just agree <laughs> on that? Like, <laughs> sorry, but no. <laughs> You've lost <laughs> Italian privileges. Like, that's, like, the least Italian you can possibly get. I love Laura saying this in a Buga de Beppo. And in- I know. <laughs> I'm like, literally have no ties to Italy. Like, By the I way, is, is that the only photo of Dorit's Buga de Beppo that exists? I think That's, so. Is that the only one that w- exists? I yeah. think I think so. And I don't think it's even confirmed that it actually is. Like, <laughs> it's, it's just on a website. When you Google search Dorit Kemsley Buga de Beppo, this pops up. So, like. <laughs> it's just a Getty <laughs> image. It's like. Ray, if yeah. you want to, you, because you're in New York, right? How real it is. No, I'm in LA still. Oh, you're in LA? Okay, yeah. so should we, I we're planning to go to Buca de Beppo and Encino when lockdown's up. So That's the fucking we're all, we're all going. Are, are you in? I'm so in, I'm so in, I'm so in, and okay. I want to see if people would tell us, like, trash. Like, if they know, like, will the waiters be like, yeah, she fucking put these stupid daisies <laughs> on the wall. And, like, I want to know. We have to do it. We yeah, what is the, the lemons? Last thing. Wait, her, do you okay? But do you guys think that she actually designed that? Like, did I feel like she outsourced her terrible taste to someone with worse taste? Like, that <laughs> looks insane. I can't believe she would put her name on that. <laughs> it's agree. really authentically Dorit to me. Like, I really <laughs> am fully buying it. Like, I was like, she did. Like, I feel her energy in <laughs> this. One you room with a one Buca de Beppo. Yeah. I want to know what happened to all those photos that were on the wall, like the photos of every fucking family that ever sat down in that restaurant <laughs> around the walls, like no. every corner. Where did they all go? She should have left that for some authentic BDP. Mm-hmm. Right? Like, but you can't... Capri. Come on, Capri. But she and made all like these... Buga and Via. I love like fake. I just love really appreciative of all the fake plant energy <laughs> going on in like what is truly just a dark room. That room hasn't seen sunlight in years. <laughs> Since it was built. People probably smoked cigs in this room for <laughs> generations. And then the carpet has just been like redone over and over. Wait, is there carpet? I can't. Is there a carpet in there? It's all hardwood. No, hardwood, baby. Hardwood. That's actually like, hard what, what makes you choose piss colored tablecloth? <laughs> I, <laughs> I, I don't know. Surprising about that. It's like pea green or something. It's so weird. I think she was like we're on a veranda in Capri right now. That's what I'm seeing, you know? And it's like they piss on the tables in they Capri. They piss on the tables in Capri, I guess. <laughs> the best I want to know how it, how it works with like the rest of the restaurant because it's just the one room. So, like, how does the flow work? Like, that's what I mean. Mm. No flow. Look at you actually caring about this business when we're all just (laughs) laughing at them. I think that it's like you're in a sea of red, it's blood red everywhere, brick, and then somewhere a door opens and you're in the lemon room. Yeah. But is it like, okay, so is there like a door, maybe like a sign on like above the above the door that's like the Dorit? Like, well, welcome to Dorit's Buddha Lounge. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Like, is it, do you like rent it out for private parties? Like, what is like, They have like the Pope you, you, room at the normal Buca de Beppo's. So it's like, the have new like Pope room. is this like they have like a Vatican theme room that I've eaten in and they had like a Pope head like in the middle of the Lazy Susan. Oh, excuse me, fancy in the back room of Buka to the back. Right? 
I feel like it's a good, this is like a whole good branding thing for Buca de Beppo. Like they haven't gotten this much press in ages. Yeah. Right? Mm. The last time I've even seen one, I think maybe I had like needed to pee really bad at the Grove. So that was like the only reason like I went in there. The food is horrible. Like, it has like big Grove energy for sure. Yeah. yeah. It's mm-hmm. like plant at the Grove, Planet Dailies is booked. So you go to Buca de Beppo. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think Dorit, I feel like I could see Dorit, going back to Kelly and Roni, I feel like I could see Dorit pulling like a Kelly exit. Right? Like from a vacation? Yeah. I feel like I, I, I see that in her, especially with how like tense it's getting with her and... Um, you know, I think all of the Beverly Hills women are like, are doing more work this season in general because I think they're all a little on edge about their jobs. And I think Mm. LVP, even though, however you feel about her, I think she did take up a lot of real estate on the show. So they've all sort of had to kind of You see them jockeying. They're jockeying the whole time. It's like, okay, you know, they've come to dinner and it's like each of them has decided today is the day I become queen at like around the table. (laughs) And it's so bizarre because it's fascinating to watch people walk into a room trying to exude bad bitch energy and they're crumbling at like the first (laughs) you know, sign of like discomfort, but it's, it's like fascinating. It's like, wait, Rena, aren't you friends with Kyle? Wait, what are we doing with Garcelle? Yeah. So, and ain't you a bad bitch? Why are you crying? It's like yeah. so weird to watch like women pushing 50 or whatever, move around like mean ass kindergarten girls. It's so fascinating. It is. Yeah, that and also I liked the last episode with the throw the callback to the last to the dinner party from hell with the like astrology psychic. It was so it was this was it, that actually really mm-hmm. disappointed me. I'm sorry to cut you off. It really disappointed no. me because it was just like, look, it's too soon for a reboot, and your reboot was whack. Like, here's this guy being like, oh, you know, I've clearly done research on you guys by watching this show. So yeah. Like, flatter you the quickest way possible and it's like no I need you to promise me the demise of a marriage like what the fuck <laughs> yeah, yeah. corny like sorry I swear so much I'm no. so no. come on we're all I also hated how uh Erica shut down like there was a fight that was starting between Sutton and someone else and Erica's like yeah, not in my me. home it's like we're in a private home if there's any place that two of these women could fight it's in a private home like yeah. let it but I don't show. understand how Dorit and Sutton can't argue in her home and she's got rules about what we can discuss and how we can discuss in your house, but we we could still say dicks and whatever we want in front of Denise's children. It just seemed like a disconnect. Yeah. But I've got general Erica issues and dislikes, so let me not I, lean in, but I hate her. I, <laughs> I, don't, I, don't I go back and forth on Erica. You don't like Erica? No, I don't enjoy her. I've never enjoyed her. It like she has been wearing drag the whole time. And I mean that in like the full sense of the word. It's like the look, the persona, like every she's never felt authentic to me. And yeah, like, she's like, yes, hunty. And you're just yeah, like, okay. like <laughs> Pat the Puss, you are not a reggae singer. Like, what are we doing here? <laughs> and and it was just like to, and then to watch the contrast between her behavior around the women and like when her husband walks into a room, like that's not a person who's being themselves. Like either her husband doesn't know who the fuck she is or her friends don't know who she is. And I get the sense that nobody in the world knows who she is. I I think that's true. Cause remember, I think, I mean, I have moments where I enjoy her and then I like, I saw her at Watch What Happens Live when they were in LA and she came out and surprised everyone and I got swept up in it and I started squealing. Like I was like, (laughs) and I'm not even that big of an Erica Jane, like I'm not like an Erica Jane head, but when she came out, I was like, ah! Like I just got, she did, she does have that effect sometimes, but the moment that turned me off so much was when Eileen mentioned something about her son Ah, being a police officer. yeah. And she wasn't saying anything bad about like she wasn't like coming for her and him but erica was like don't you talk about my and like made eileen feel so terrible yeah and I, she misunderstood what eileen said and eileen is like this was one of the sweetest people like on that right franchise and she just belittled her and made her and eileen was crying 
And I was like, right. don't come for Eileen because I, I was very <laughs> proud of her. You know what? what Beast. But also, like a whole profession oh, can't you. be off limits, right? Like yeah. a whole job can't be off limits to discuss. Yeah. My son became a cop, tough titties. Like people might mention police. I don't, yeah. They're everywhere. Like I you know, just think yeah. this, like this, um, this part of my life, which is 95% of my life is off limits. And I get to set in absurd boundaries and no one else gets to set those same boundaries. That's insane to me. It's not fun to watch. And uh, there seems to be a dark streak in her. And I'm like, lean in, yeah. Tell, yeah. like yeah. show me. You're so the, image obsessed. It's not fun. My my problem with Erica is that she sort of changed the franchise so much and it, it all became about like her glam squad. Yeah. And I think, I think because she had all of that going on, she didn't really have to bring a whole lot when it came to like cast interactions. It was like her job was safe because everyone was so like enamored by her glam squad mm -hmm. and, and her career. And she was almost on like a separate show for like three seasons. And then all the other housewives started doing that because they thought, oh, Erica has been really successful with just bringing in crazy outfits and, and doing her own show. And for a couple seasons on Beverly Hills, I felt like they were all sort of doing their own shows and there wasn't a whole lot of like interaction. And it worked for Erica and like good for her that it worked, but it's like, I don't want to see every single housewife trying to do that same mold of like, yeah. I'm gonna just bring fashion to the show and not bring anything else. Yeah, yeah, that's true. She had a lot of like, it was like a lot of wealth flexing too in a different way than the other women did it, which She's I think- very new money. Mm -hmm. But yeah. also like so ostentatious that it's almost like she buys the right to make these weird boundaries that somehow the other women like they just accept them rather than crossing them she kind of just reminds me of a rapper in that way where it's like here's an aggressive show of labels here's an aggressive show of like the tackiest wealth and um Dorit I love it on Dorit because I don't know why but I love me some Dorit I love she reminds me of like Jenny from the block circa 2001 in her fashion and her looks and I'm just here for like New York tackiness you know yeah. and, um, but on Erica it just because her face is so um uh, she looks like a porcelain doll almost like I expect Erica to be like carrying class a certain way but then she like slaps the tackiest thing on and it's jarring for me it doesn't feel organic or lived in yeah it doesn't I think that's really yeah I think that was she has like a shadow around her at all times and I think it comes off in the show a lot and I think she almost has like a know me from um showgirls energy of just like i come from different places and that's all you're gonna get you know and you're just like Straight. like you try to talk to her about it she's like nope she you know and like she has this whole like i want to know about her past where she was dancing at that bar that danielle Staub used to work at in new jersey and you know that they go to that bar uh, yeah it was like you know she was tipping all the dancers like that was like kind of cool seeing that and i was like i want to know about your your past in the 90s New York as like a young model trying to like be famous and like- I do, think, I do think this season she is sort of opening up more than we've seen her. I, I mean, I agree with you guys too, but it's, it's still right? controlled, you're right. Yeah. Very she, cool. like, she decided, <clears throat> excuse me, this isn't something that came up organically in conversation, right? Like I used to be a stripper. I mention it organically or whatever all the time, but here she is. She used to be a go-go dancer uh, or stripper, whichever you think it is. And it's not like, oh, stop talking about strippers negatively. I used to be one. That would be a lovely way to hear about that. But it's like, on a trip, we pre-planned to go to New York. I got us a bus so that we could go to a strip club on designated hours so you could see what I, and it's like, there's nothing authentic about this. She didn't even really have like good engaging conversation about it when they were there. It was just like, yeah, I got like, money are we? and I got out and it's like, no, tell me about the time like you slapped a customer cause he tweaked your nipple. Like, I wanna know. <laughs> yeah. 
Dorit yeah, too. I mean, Carrie, I think you said uh, Dorit has won you over or something. And I feel the same way. Like Dorit has like a weird quirkiness that I was really turned off by at first. Oh, and now, really? now I'm, yeah, now I'm like totally charmed by her. And like, in, and I think she's absurd. And I think she, her and PK are con people. <laughs> but like, but once I sort of gave into the, in the idea. Camp that they are fully, they're yeah. like, they're scammers. Oh. Yes. <laughs> thousand percent I would have believed anything more I need to be educated on their scam I, I just feel like he has like I think he just like is one of those people that's like yeah yeah we'll do it we'll get in business together like just just get you know and then like someone like wires some money and then yep. it keeps, it's, a, it's like kind of Ponzi yeah, yeah. don't like there's no goes, follow through on anything yeah. they've never completed a business venture or whatever it's just like okay somebody put 10 million in my bank account i promised them bathing suits and the bathing suits never arrived they got lost yes. in the mail. yeah oh. like, well, and and i i think what is i think why i like i was just gonna follow up with i feel like dorit is like pure camp which is like what lacks because i think it used to be campier um, especially on Be beverly hills and i think dorit has that like she's just so you're right like she's absurd everything she says like when they showed the the photo shoot of like her like in her house before teddy's <laughs> event i was crying because it was like good. she looked great that was, she looked amazing. Looked fantastic incredible she looked yeah. amazing, but it was just so funny she was just like you know and it's like she's just She's just doing um, it, you know? And I, I, and I also like the additional layer of it making Kyle so mad made it perfect. It was like, perfect. It was like, what an absurd thing to be this angry about. And then yeah. it made me love it so much more. I was like, lean on that wall, bitch. Like, yeah. You, yeah, you, can't, you can't figure out what Dorit's going to do next either, because it's like, you mentioned she did the fucking swimsuit line. Now she's doing Buka de Beppo. <laughs> she's she's done a Buka literally, pivot. That, like, <laughs> <laughs> you could look at skinny skinny girl even like skinny girl did like lunch meets at one point but i feel like there's still at least like an umbrella of what bethany's skinny girl is mm -hmm. but dorit's umbrella of her branding is just like all over the fucking place i just saw something online she posted a recipe that she did i think it was like a tuna <laughs> pasta or like it was a very bizarre recipe she posted I on saw Instagram. like what are you that. doing this for wait so she yeah that was be, like the rap game Ina garden like what is she <laughs> right? doing? like none of, it doesn't make sense that is crazy. That tuna pasta was, that was channeling the devil. What Someone had that? tagged me in that. I don't know, but I was like, this isn't, it's not tuna helper time, Dorit. Like, no Did one it look like bad because it was a bad dish or because Dorit made it? I think it's just like a tuna, like a tuna <laughs> in a funny. pasta. Yeah, That's it's just like, it doesn't mesh for my like personal taste. Like I'm all about Nobody any other- hates. Nobody yeah, no one stayed. Apologies to like the tuna community, but like <laughs> <laughs> best over step. All tuna but, like truly tuna pasta is like can't think of anything worse. Put and anything I, in pasta. I don't know if it was like attached to any sort of like social media promo or, or it was just like Dorit's like, this is my famous tuna casserole or whatever. <laughs> she was like, what the it. fuck is this? <laughs> also the fact that, can we just like, I'll never forget the fact that boy George was just like living with them. Like that's so, like her life is so weird. That's why she's they so hit weird. him behind a curtain for they, a party. Yeah, they were like, and then the reveal was boy. Like, I mean, he's he's cool, right? But it's just like he George, boy George just manifests in Dorit's like parlor. You're just PK his manager. Is that yeah. what the connection yeah. is? Yeah, but that's oh, okay. I but I don't understand that either because how, do you know a lot of managers who just manage one client and. For, there was a lot of years where Boy George wasn't really working, and I like Boy George, but <laughs> I don't know. It's just like I don't trust anything they do, and I love. That. Sounds money laundering scheme yeah. to me to have well, a manager when you're not working for like years and years that you have to I pay. Just, can I just say a theory that I just that just came to me? Yeah. Okay. PK knew the Vanderpumps from years before. Mm -hmm. And the Vanderpumps knew James Kennedy's dad, who used to be like affiliated with boy with George Michael. Oh yeah, yeah. So is there mm -hmm. some kind of like greater van that all goes back to the Vanderpump? Todd? Like were they just monopolizing the yes. underbelly of like the gay scene in England? Yes. Yes. Wow. wow. You just said it, and now we said it. Feel what we revealed tonight, and it's like oh, somebody maybe says the Maddoxes are involved. Who are the Maddoxes? Oh, Ariana? Ariana? 
Wait, Wait how, how are they involved? How are they involved? We need to elaborate on no, we're, theory. We're talking, we're Rupert, talking about Rupert like, Maddox. Who's Rupert who's Maddox? Who's Rupert Maddox? I'm, yeah, like. I'm, oh, Rupert hey. Murdoch. Oh, Rupert oh. Murdoch. <laughs> Was like, Bro, like how's Ariana involved? And her brother? Yeah. But like, think about it. Imagine, imagine for a second, like in like 1987, like old Soho, like the the gay scene of Soho, and like mm-hmm. Vanderpump, like they're all like coming up with this scheme together and like set, you know, insurance fraud and managing gay singers. Yeah. Like, I don't know. It just maybe mm-hmm. all. I feel like they're all connected. I mean, I, I mean, I, I don't know. I'm just being silly. I wouldn't put a scam past LVP and Ken because Never. they're good friends with Muhammad Hadid, who apparently is a scammer. And they're, they only fell out with Dory and PK because uh, her other scam got called out. So look, yeah. I, love, I love LVP. So I, I mean, really want the origin story of James's mom and her relationship to LVP and Ken. Mm. Like, I I, yeah. I feel like there's some good stuff there. Like, if we could get camera footage of young, when James was taking his first steps at Tiffany's. At fucking <laughs> Tiffany's. Yeah. You took your first steps at Tiffany's. And I, yeah, and, like, this American, like, young ingenue, like, coming into this, like, London scene. Like, I, yeah, her and story is wild, probably. And also remember, like, there was a discrepancy between how close James seemed to think his parents were to Lisa and how like not close Lisa wanted us to understand who they actually were. So maybe mm-hmm. there's something there like uh, yes. you know, like Phaedra and her crimes with Apollo or whatever. Yes. <laughs> like uh, we have to look like we've never done anything, you know? Yeah, I think there and like the, there's some, okay. Maybe it's like some blood oath, like we go down together, we don't like fuck around each other. And maybe when, because Dur- Dorit's a PK's like second wife or third wife? Third? Or second three wife? Women, third. Three women, three <laughs> women. I don't know. I, I didn't know that. I think, I don't, I think they just got married recently, right? Or like in the last like six, seven years? They got married pretty, re- definitely like around. Oh. 10 or less years, right? I don't know why I thought PK was married before Dorit. So I was no, thinking- doesn't he have an older children? I think Yeah, I think he is. He does. But I'm I looking him up right now. Three separate women would have married PK, my goodness. He was married to like Loretta. Loretta. <laughs> he was married to Loretta from Portsmouth. That's what Wikipedia well, says. <laughs> oh, oh um, Loretta from Loretta. Portsmouth, you don't say. Love the her. Cu- the couple have three children and uh, uh, before they moved to America, his wife and children ret- returned to London in 2012. In Ooh. March, in March 2015, he married Dorit. Oh, so, so it's- he let his That's children it. go back to England without him there to marry he, Dorit. Yeah, Somebody it, was escaping a scam or something. We it have says to- it says Dorit and PK married at a lavish wedding in New York City. He has a son and a daughter from his second marriage, so he must have been married three times. That's Wow. Oh, so I was right about this. Yeah. <laughs> you Dorit knew. PK. He's so gross. He's, He's so Bluebeard. I, I like. Did, wait, I, wait. I, can I um, also just say it says his occupation on Wikipedia is <laughs> football chairman. What? And pro- football chairman and property developer. Football chairman. A football like, chairman. Like, is he on the board of a soccer team? Like, what? Are we on just as a soccer fan? I think that we're Are we honestly on I think one of the greater purposes of just like sex unique podcasts in general is to get into the the darker realms of the LVP universe. And I didn't sign up to do it. It happened, it fell, it's fallen in my from, lap. From New York from Scary Island to from Scary Island to Jersey there is about Beverly Hills Housewives. But I but really I'm so think nervous now that we're gonna get off. One by one, because we do something. We have witnesses, and if anything (laughs) weird happens to literally any of us, well, it's like who to call. We're all gonna wake up tomorrow, and it's gonna be like Carlton when when Carlton put a spell on Kyle's iPad. We're all just gonna have spells. (laughs) Oh yeah, what did it say? Like larva or something? (laughs) But I don't know. Maybe Dorit was like Lisa when she. I'll, I'll close with this with my theory but maybe when Dorit was like Lisa planted the story about Lucy Lucy 
Lisa was like, hey, we have a deal that none of us rat each other out for anything. And you didn't play by the rules because you're the new wife. Mm-hmm. Not to go. Just my theory. But then, but then Lisa had to go. But then Lisa had to go because she couldn't keep her lies straight. But it's I still... Okay. It's okay. We only needed her on... I only need her on Vanderpump Rules now. I only need her shitting on Jax now. Yes. I'm good with that. That's the perfect sweet spot for Lisa. It's like, okay, she don't have to lie about dogs here. She don't have to do all this. Just tell Jax he ain't shit, you know, and I'm good. Yeah. Even on Vanderpump, though, I want her to just kind of dip in a little bit less than what she's really even a little less yeah, I less, yeah this is like a to more me. removed stance this when i saw her at the baseball field that was tough for my eyes when she was playing, <laughs> when she got up for the softball game i thought you know what Lisa, you play this like, in your country lisa what are you doing here <laughs> like maybe just back up we don't need you at this scene i think there is something to her being on her like it's her own turf. I think she is more comfortable. And I think at the end of Housewives, she wasn't comfortable anymore and she was like rattled. So it was like she was kind of becoming undone. And I think when she's in the Vanderpump's universe, she's like, at least in her eyes, is in control. So she's like more, she she gives us a little more. Yeah, there's a hierarchy. Control. She knows that she's like up here and all these people are down here to yeah. kind of bring it back to Kelly terms. But the longer she stays involved, intimately with the Vanderbump universe the more she levels down to eventually yeah. she's just like on their level I also just don't need Tom like fantasizing about shaving her like it's just it, it like much. it makes them both look horrendous it's awful um, she loves do men doing that- spawn con for her <laughs> <laughs> like sexy spawn con for Lisa. Like she, it, it, it's never turns that opportunity down to I have know. like a young man She's talk like, um, sexualize. People her want to audience. fuck me. Okay. Yeah, she wants it, mechanics, the mechanics wants- of her planning a bra in Tom's uh, suitcase was <laughs> unhinged. <laughs> unhinged. I think, I think she wants to like win over straight men. Yeah. Like I've already got the gays and the women, but now I need yeah. like, Okay, like, question. It doesn't take much, though. I mean, all you have to do with a straight man is literally just stand there and they're like, yeah, we want to fuck you. Like, I don't yeah. think it's like, <laughs> she's really thinking way too hard about Wait, it. Wait, so Lisa, <laughs> loves, say, right? uh, Lisa loves a broken, like, brain, like, my friends call it broken bird. Like, Lisa has, like, a broken bird thing. That would, is. She, would she like Kelly? I feel like she would weaponize Kelly on a oh, on a yeah. vacation episode. Like if if Kelly had been the one to pull the like tabloids out about Mauricio, it would have gone so successfully. Like it would have been amazing. I feel like I think I think she would have definitely like you like use Kelly like a torpedo because Lisa knows how to you're right she knows how to like yeah, she would have known what to do with Kelly. Of, like vulnerable like she did it with Brandy kind of yeah yeah and- like she would have definitely def I feel like this trip although I'm grateful for Scary Island it would have <laughs> went completely differently if Lisa was there but we might have gotten explosions in a better way in a different like uh direction you know what I mean like yeah it would have the other women would have melted down a lot more I feel like if they had someone who was like clever enough to like steer Jockey. yeah I always think about how Scary Island would have went differently if Luann would have been there I mean yeah. I think Jill showed up at the perfect time so ultimately I think Jill's presence was like perfect but mm-hmm. Luann was was sort of like the one sort of god tier housewife or housewife that people really like look at Mm-hmm. who wasn't there and although she was recording her single back in the states <laughs> <laughs> they like, think about like how it would have been don't you know <laughs> she went and... <laughs> <laughs> no i agree i yeah i think luann it was missing her yeah mm-hmm. i miss but her i miss yeah. her but i mean it's a it's a classic episode it's seminal and i'm just i'm glad we got to talk about it i'm glad we got to talk about lots of things other than scary island and i'm you guys are amazing yeah i'm just Thank grateful you. that 10 years later we can all still talk about it and like connect on it 
and find new things. And we still have more to uncover. I still think there are still a ton of secrets. And I, I tweeted this, Laura, you mentioned it earlier, but I think that we need Bravo during this quarantine time when they're like struggling for content. I think we need an editor to go dig through that fucking footage. And I would love to see even like a pop-up video version of Scary mm. Island or something. Ugh with like mm -hmm. a couple new scenes. I know there's gotta be some extra stuff. Like that's all I want. Cause there, I know there was stuff that we just don't know about yet. And so- well, they, did that, they did that with di Dinner Party from Hell. Right. Yeah. Uh, oh, did they? I gotta go find yeah. that. Yeah, they, they do like a whole like B roll, like what was really happening. Like they go in, it's, it's a whole episode just about oh the- Oh my dinner. God. It's Wait, really Scary good. Island Truth or Danny? Yeah. I like I it. You're the Alex Jones of Roni. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one quick one quick question before we all like leave did scary island so this was my first time watching it god forgive me i just showed up to real housewives of new york in season four is when i started watching them so it's this is my pardon oh no but you're you're good you got the whole gist even if you yeah i got the gist i had like been in and out but like season four i think was the first time i watched like fully um but watching it back I don't enjoy Bethany which I know is blasphemy, blasphemy around a lot of circles but I don't enjoy her in the present and it made like it reinforced why I didn't enjoy her when I watched Scary Island and but then I found myself like more fond of Ramona and I found myself like more fond of Sonia I was like oh this is the Sonia that you know, was gallivanting around New York and was like so beautiful and like she was so, so fun. And like, so mm. it, it like reshaped a lot of the way I'm gonna be watching this season, for example, going forward. Cause there was like, in my head, the, the Sonia that she's like trying to revisit, I couldn't picture. And even though she's not still in the great place, but in like season three, I see more of where she could have been and what she might have been trying to hold on to. So like has rewatching Scary Island made you reconsider who these women are in the present? Yeah, yeah. It's funny you mentioned Sonia because I think she's gotten to the point currently in the season we're watching now where it's like she's vomiting in a car ride home and like her, her to me her drunkenness has gotten to be too much. Like I, yeah. I don't even find it that fun anymore. It's like so dark. And there's moments where it's like, haha, she said like a ridiculous line or whatever. But for the most part, I'm like, oh, it makes me, it feels too dark for me. Um, mm -hmm. But you're right, back then in season three, she she was more put together and she was not, I, I don't know, she's she's changed a lot and I don't really love what she's become. And she's almost become a character of herself. I think she mm -hmm. knows like what the fans like and they yeah, like her totally. kind of like weird quirky. I would pussy because they're gonna love this on Twitter, you know? Yeah. yeah, and I, I think, almost think she leans into that too much. Yeah, I, I, I think she's like, she's like the Twitter gays, well, you know, they'll retweet my meme or of me, you know what I mean? I think she's definitely like too aware of like her image now. And you're right, I think there is, it's almost kind of tragic because she had this like, just elegance in the first season that she was on in season three, like in Scary Island, she's so, gorgeous and elegant and like effortlessly chic even though she's like a little messy mm -hmm. there's like this like you're, you get it why she was like this it girl yeah and yeah it, it's sad to see and I I'm like I'm in recovery and like you know I know I wouldn't want to have had a camera following me when I was like rock bottoming but mm -hmm. it's like hard to watch her now and it's you so think she's rock bottom right now <laughs> I think she's I mean, throwing the throw up in the van seemed like pretty bottomy okay seemed like near at least near the bottom near somewhere I like she's at on the way because you know I, yeah. I don't know i think there's i think there are more dangerous disappointing yeah. places for her to go yeah. i mean there's that's the thing about addiction is there's always you think there's a rock bottom and there's a trap door that leads to yeah. like like i've been like you think you go and then you go further down yeah. so i think you might be right on yeah i mean side. i think you're right in the sense that like she doesn't see I don't think she sees the darkness that she's bringing to the table at all. Like, I think There's that no she has a drinking problem. No, she's cool. like, I'm not gonna, I don't really feel like drinking today. Like blah, blah, blah. And then cut to like, three hours later, you're puking in a daytime in a van. Right. Like Dorinda <laughs> at least feels like she's in such denial because like a little part of her in the back of her head right here is like, girl, you drink too much. But I don't even think it has occurred to Sonia that she drinks too much. I don't on, the, on the flip side though i 
uh, Ray, you mentioned like, do, do you look at these women differently? And I think Ramona on the flip side, I, I appreciate her so much because I don't think she's changed much. I think she's yeah. always kind of been the same <laughs> rude monster. And that's what I love. I'm like, I don't, I don't think the show affects Ramona much at all. Like I no. think she's exactly who she is off camera. Not that that's a good thing, but I, that's what I like about Ramona. And no, so. I truly was like, look at her ordering her friends around like they're the help, even in season three. It's she's who telling, she is. She's like, Bethany, next time, less salt in the oatmeal. Too much salt in the oatmeal. And I'm like, oh, um, and now you're going to tell her to clean up your house. This is great. It was awesome. And there was like a sweet. I look. love you. I love the way you prepared this for me, but next time I would really. <laughs> yeah. I also think that when like she a- goes, when she was like, where is the wine? Like to the yeah. other the wine? girls when like the like the ship deckhands like didn't bring her white wine. I was like, someone got a real tongue lashing after that. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> also just I'll one last thing about Ramona. Like she was so like sweet and giddy about the house. And like she was like when they were on the beach, she was like, when she was like, I imagine myself making love with Mario. <laughs> you know, and it's like there was something like it's like that was like salacious and kind of for her to say and I there was like an innocence to her that I think isn't really there that much anymore because of what you know I think what happened I mean we're watching her celebrate a marriage that was clearly mm. not yeah it's 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 tragic but guys thank you so much for being on here this was like delightful yeah Um, thank thank you you for having me you guys I can't wait for all of us to go to the Buddha or the the Buka room room. we'll sit right at this table I'm dead serious about that do not forget I wouldn't joke about Buka oh my god don't get pissed people talk on you don't get pissed on you (laughs) um Ray where can people follow you on Instagram and Twitter Oh, um, on Instagram, on I'm Rafizzle87. Don't make fun of me. That was a nickname I came up with in high school. And um, Ray Sani on Twitter. And you write for the Black Lady Sketch Show on TV. Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. Which yeah. is but so funny. Right it's so oh, funny. Thank oh, you so much. That means a lot to me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And then Danny, where can people follow you on Instagram and Twitter? Uh, at Danny Pellegrino. Um, and then my podcast is Everything Iconic. Yes. Yes. Well, stay tuned for Buka Venture with the yes. four of us yeah. yes thank you guys fly, so fly much way out. he's gonna come with us too so mm-hmm. bye guys bye bye and then there were two there were two god they were amazing to it buka once again to it buka once again to it buka capri. once again to and capri <laughs> once again to capri once again well i'm glad we talked a little about but you know, it all kind of wrapped up at the end, which was great. It all comes back to a place of scary, of scariness, honestly. All right, like, and is, is there one question we should answer? We'll do one question. Let's do. I love there was a question from Olivia who just wrote, yes, not yes. a question, Olivia. <laughs> Did you watch the VPR secrets revealed? Not yet, because we're doing this, but I'm going to watch it right after this. Oh, here's a good one. Laura and Carrie, if you if you had to pick one husband from the RH franchise, who would be? you can't pick Ken. Mauricio. Mauricio? Yeah, I think I was so. a little turned off by him in that episode when he was like partying at their house. There was something He seems like it seems like he's now like kind of getting loose and going off the rails. He's always had a little bit of like cheater energy. Yeah. I but mean, he's still obviously like now yeah, like now more than ever, it's probably gonna happen a little bit. I mean, if we're turking, if we're turking, if, if we're, we're turking, <laughs> if we're turking, um, fucking definitely Mauricio. I don't know if yeah, I want Mauricio. to get married to him. I don't know Honestly, if I want to get married to Tom <laughs> to get married to Tom. Which Tom? Erica's Tom. He'll just. Oh, yeah. Then I could do my podcast and like do what I want. You don't have to worry about much. And then he really only comes out of his little turtle shell from, you know, like he's yeah. in bed by like 6 p.m. Sundown, he, you throw him back to the help. So I'm going to say I agree with that. And I'm going to do another wild card. What? Bar- Bobby Zarin, RIP. He was a supportive husband. And I do like that he told Jill when she's talking to Luann, she's like, Bobby told me I made him a huge mistake in the way yeah. I cut Bethany out. And it's like, Bobby you really Beth- need someone that's going to keep it fucking real with you. 
Bobby, lo- he was a really good person and, and he, he was very doting and devoted to Jill and Allie. And he, mm-hmm. he did want to see, I think he really wanted to see Jill and Bethany make amends because I think Bethany was like their family. Yeah. That was really sad because Bobby was like best friends with her too. What can you refresh my memory as to what went down between Jill and Bethany? Like why they had a falling out? Um, I forget the exact reason, but base I think the underlying reason was Jill was Jill liked Bethany when she was the underdog and she was like this scrappy chef um trying to make it in New York and Jill was sort of like took her under her wing like an older sister and then mm-hmm. when Bethany started getting kind of too big for her britches for or in, in Jill's eyes Jill kind of started turning on her and they had like a true falling out and they like I think there were like I forget the exact reasons I'm I'm being bad right now but I think it was just wrote, Jill is payment <laughs> Jill is payment but so, I think it was just me. Jill being jealous that of Skinny Girl and then Jason and then like Bethany had her own show. And I think Bethany was like starting to become like more famous than any of them and richer. And I think yeah. Jill just couldn't handle it. And they had a falling out. But then they came together at Bobby's funeral. Mm-hmm. which was really sad, but like beautiful to watch. Yeah, that I mean, as long as it they get brought together again. Well... Jill is going to be on this season, I think, at some point. Good. Let's get her back. I'm ready to, like... Let's get her back. Let's Let's get her back. Let's get her back, I'd say. I have to be quite honest with you. I I love her back. I have to be quite honest with you. I'd like to see Jill and Bethany back together. I miss Danielle, honestly. I, like, think of her all the time. Oh, yeah, wait. Also, we didn't talk about Jill on ice skates in this episode. (laughs) <laughs> when she when she gets screamed at by the French ice skate instructor and she's like, no, he's right. he has a point. Could have said it nicer. Could have said, said it nicer. Classic Jill Zarin. Could have said it nicer, but yeah, he's right. He's right. We'll go. I'm not wanted here. She knew. She knew. She knew. She knew what she did. I know. I miss her too. She knew what she did. Mary Fett killed Danielle Carlton Kelly. Kill Carlton. Uh, she's kill Carlton. truly up to no good. Uh, Mary Danielle. Mary Danielle. Like, I'd love to make a wife Kelly. of her. And I, I guess I would fuck Kelly because maybe she, I mean, she's so crazy. She either, she either brings it in bed or not. But even if you approach her and was like, I want to fuck you, she doesn't have one night stand. So then you wouldn't have to fuck her. So it's yeah. Mary Danielle. <laughs> when Kelly goes, I don't have one night stands from the Midwest. Yeah. She called Bethany a hoe bag. Oh, she also said a chef. What did she say? A chef does not a chef make. A cook. You're a cook. You're a cook. You're not an executive chef at a restaurant. You're and I don't know if you cook. I don't know. None of my friends use you. There was one moment where it cuts to Kelly, and it was like the night before the like freak out, or where they're still on the yacht, and she's sitting there looking at Bethany. The night she calls her a hoe bag, and she's like. <laughs> like that was truly the energy I was bringing to this day earlier prior to getting on this live feed. I took Tony for a walk and I was really pure, just like <laughs> Kelly also goes at one point when she's talking about asking them to, she wants to take their photo. She goes, Bethany, I don't know what your story is, but you're more than welcome to come. I was like, oh. uh, <laughs> literally the worst when part. you die and you're sent to hell you'll know you're in hell because you're on a beach and Kelly Killer and Ben Simone is bullying you into doing a photo shoot with her. Yeah. Sonia looked great. Sonia looked incredible. And I love when her and Ramona are taking like thoughty pictures. I know. <laughs> They're I on like, their I love dirt. That's really best friend energy with like a Sony digital camera. Yeah. And Ramona's like, oh, it's out of batteries. Oh. And then they're like trying to get it. And Kelly on with her... <laughs> she like her she has like kind of big hands and her little blackberry huge hands and her massive glasses like as though oh. she's like channeling her artist side but yeah. she put her glasses on so you'd know she's serious yeah that terry richardson Oof. cosplay i was like get out of here <laughs> um well well guys. here we are again guys Thank you so much for tuning in, everyone. Thank you're you all so, so much. Funny. 
What a history. What a history. Um, what a beautiful, beautiful live stream. We'll be doing some more. And um, yeah. yeah. You can follow Laura at Lars Marie on Twitter and Instagram. You can follow Carrie at Ikario, aka Ikaro. And Ikaro, buona notte, Ikaro. Buona notte, Ciao. Ciao, Ciao, Lena. Ciao, Lenu. Ciao, Lenu. Bye, Bye guys. guys. Love you all. Love y'all. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>